we in? I think I think we in, dog. I think we're in. I think we in. We in. This is the Chris and Kyle show, and we are Chris and Kyle. He's Chris. Got, I'm Kyle. This is like my third cup of coffee today. Yeah, you just drank two in like literally 15 minutes. Oh, that's a lot hotter than I expected. You're getting wow. lit up in up in here for this podcast. Feeling good? Yeah, I feel great. Other than you using lit. I use lit all the time and you know it. I feel like I started using lit uh, sarcastically. and, uh, and Lit's a good word. And, but then I, I, there's a certain moment where I stopped using it sarcastically just because it became habit. Lit is good slang. Like, there's lit and then there's fire and they're different. Like, I remember, I think it's like when we were in high school, people said fire a lot and I didn't like it. But lit, I can get behind. Why why do you prefer Don't ask me fire? to explain it. I can't. It's it's intangible. It's just a feeling. How about you introduce us and everything? I just uh, did. He's Chris. I'm Kyle. Okay. And this is we're, the Chris and Kyle in. show. It's happening. This is the Chris and Kyle show. Welcome, guys. This is guys. the quality content that you can welcome, expect. Welcome to us. <laughs> uh, welcome to me, specifically. You know I love the word lit now. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, some fun stuff happened this week. Uh, we We claim to be a podcast that talks about movies so we're, we can lead with some movie stuff i guess i mean if we talk about everything we, we're gonna end up talking about movies that's true but like some some there was like some big drops in the movie world nothing that came out really but some stuff to look forward to there's some trailers some there's some cool good trailers, trailers. That came out. yeah which one so there's like three big ones which one are you most okay out of, out of the three that we just watched we just watched dark phoenix uh, B- Fantastic, uh, Fantastic Beasts, Beasts two, the which, Grindelwald one, Crimes of Grindelwald. Uh, they've 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 leaned back on the mouthy title and all their stuff now just says Crimes of Grindelwald because they know it's nonsense to call it Fantastic, Fantastic Beasts, Beasts and two where... or yeah Fantastic Beasts and where to find them too the Crimes of Grindelwald is a very long <laughs> title very hard to keep track of. Um, I think out of all of and them, and Creed two was the last one. I think I might be most excited for Dark Phoenix. Really? Yeah. Is That's that my weird? lowest. That's is that weird? Is I that definitely weird? think it's weird. I think the thing that makes it the most weird is precedent. I feel like Beast is probably the the third for me. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I, no, I, I really like the first. I, I'm insanely excited All three for of these it. movies, I will, I will oh, for yeah. sure watch. Oh, like, and sure. I'm excited for it. For sure. This um, is, we're none of the trailer. Point. Yeah, none of the trailers looked bad like no i think they're all good trailers so we'll we'll talk about phoenix first then because it's kind of fun to do you top to bottom me bottom to top maybe okay um first of all fantastic beast is not what we're talking about and i almost started talking about it because that's how excited i am but uh dark phoenix is the probably last x-men movie made by fox because disney now owns the rights Disney, oh really? Disney bought Fox, dude. Please. I'm, dude. I am so. You don't know that Disney bought Fox? No, no, no. I understand that Disney bought Fox, but I, I don't understand the, like. So I know that Spider Man, like, Sony. came over into. Okay, god damn it, dude. See, it's confusing. So the me. one, the one thing that so Disney now has everything except Spider Man. They have the X Men now. They have Doctor Doom. Wait, so but Disney the has Fantastic Spider-Man. Four. But Disney has. So Spider-Man. they made like a temporary deal with Sony. Where to include him in the they Avengers? can include Spider Man specifically, just Spider Man, no other Spider Man characters in their films, as long as Sony can distribute the Spider Man film. So Sony gets like a cut of the money from Spider Man Homecoming, even though it's a MCU movie, Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah this is why I don't really like try to keep up with all that because it just seems like Spider Man Far From Home, the sequel, is going to be the last movie in that deal, which is why movies like. Venom are getting made and they're fast tracking all these other weird Spider Verse movies because they're trying to prove that they can make Spider Man movies without Marvel's help. <sighs> and I think at least at the very least strong arm Marvel into paying them more money for Spider Man from here on out, if nothing else. Yeah, it's just it's that's such a like a bureaucratic thing to keep up with, you know? It's, like yeah, it, it's, it, it's I, crazy. I don't enjoy I'm I'm just I'm like can you make good movies? That's all I want. <laughs> is the mo- next movie that you're coming out with, am I going to be hyped for it? Yeah. And Dark Phoenix, I'm kind of hyped for it. Like, yeah, well, I- me too. I'm excited. I think that this movie looks like it's going to have something that I think Apoc- Apocalypse lacked, which Apocalypse mm-hmm. was kind of forgetful. I mean, a lot of people like hate Apocalypse. I didn't hate it, but it was it's forget it's kind of forgettable. 
Um, like there was some cool stuff in it, but I don't, and I don't remember it super well. I remember Days of Future Past super well. That movie was awesome. The, I remember Apocalypse being really just average. Yeah. I remember Days of Future Past being really good and First yep. Class being good. Yep. So like the thing I think that Dark Phoenix looks like it might have that we were missing a bit in Apocalypse is actually like leaning into the main team a little bit, getting to know Gene and Scott and mm-hmm. Storm. Like there's so, so uh, the, the, the big thing for me that like the new age X-Men movies have going against them is weirdly their biggest star. Oh, they it, have Jennifer J-Law. Lawrence yeah. and they got Jennifer Lawrence and they before, lean into before she was Jennifer Lawrence. So now mm-hmm. that they have her and she's mm-hmm. stuck and she can't escape, yeah. they lean into mystique so hard and mm-hmm. it makes no sense. It just doesn't fit the characters from the comics, doesn't fit the source material. And I think it, it feels forced, but I love, 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 love James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender as young Professor Xavier and Magneto. I think they're amazing. Have you seen Split? No, I have not seen Split. You haven't, you haven't seen Split? No. That's the best James McAvoy that I've seen. Performance. It's like it's it's kind of over the top mm-hmm. in a way, but like uh, it's a lot like like Al Pacino and Son of a Woman, mm-hmm. where you're like, okay, this is going over the top, but this is like a fucking really good actor going yeah. over the top. And it's like and go, it's like going, it's like when it. Nick Cage hits it, and it is <laughs> by you've seen you've seen Unbreakable, right? Yeah, I love Unbreakable. Is okay. it weird that I'm excited for the? You know, uh, I think it's called Glass. Yeah, the the trilogy movie or whatever. I don't even though I haven't seen weird. I think that people are getting too hyped for it because I don't think that it's going to be good. I was not excited about. Okay, Unbreakable. Unbreakable. My favorite M Night Shyamalan movie. I think that movie is fucking phenomenal. That movie. I think that movie is a fucking masterpiece to me. I think that it's better than Sixth Sense. Okay. Um. Split did not have to be in that universe. I no, it was liked, like a super surprise for people. I like to split for certain reasons. I like the 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 movie that M Night. Sh- we're fucking. We're gonna just so you guys know, we're gonna be going on tangents and like and random uh, trains of thought and everything. So we went from t- uh, Dark Phoenix to M <laughs> to Night split. Shyamalan to yeah to split and everything. We'll jump back though. But M Night Shyamalan is best when he's like reserved. When he's made with, like. And Mike Shyamalan can make a make when he's not a better, to do too much. When he's making like a movie that exists ninety percent in one room, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. That that's when he's making a good movie. Whereas something like The Last so Airbender, I, I haven't seen a lot of M Night. I've seen Unbreakable. I've <laughs> seen Signs a long time ago. Um, I've seen I've seen The Last Airbender. That movie's horrible. <laughs> Yeah, did you watch all of it? No, God okay. no. I think I watched. Like I did maybe thirty minutes. I did. <laughs> I don't That's know impressive. why. I have seen all of the so, last okay, Airbender but and haven't actually seen because you've never seen the show. I know. Yeah. I love that show. Yeah, that show is amazing. Yeah, I've also loved the Legend of Korra, the sequel show. Shout yeah, out. yeah. Okay, uh, interesting. The movie's garbage. Um, <laughs> the movie's really bad. Yeah, it's uh, really and, it, and it is like the perfect example of like the of my point really. Like the last Ender, last there's, Airbender there's too is much. so out there, and there's so much things going on, and also he has to truncate like all of this material, all mm-hmm. of this source material. Well, the the idea of trying to fit. Even one entire season of a TV show, mm-hmm. even if it's an animated show, it doesn't mean anything. Even yeah. one movie is insane. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so M. Night Shyamalan is best when he does more reserved things, when he does like more restricted narratives. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I fucking loved Unbreakable. Like Split is like, so Unbreakable, like you remember Unbreakable, how mm-hmm. like sort of down to earth it yeah, was. Yeah, it's very, for a, yeah. For a superhero movie, it's not a superhero movie. But it is. But it it's is. an origin yeah. story for a superhero movie. It is a origin story for a superhero movie, yeah. but like it is like if it were real life. Yeah, like, there's no. It's very grounded. The it's only like, thing. It's the only superhero thing that might be as grounded or near as grounded as like Chronicle. But Chronicle, there's like more bizarre shit happening. Too. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's, like the, more, there's the space like, rock, and there are no yeah. flying people. Yeah, in Unbreakable. Well, and, and it's it's his it's partially his power and set. The only he's Unbreakable, and the only. Uh, the only kind of wild and out shit that I remember from Unbreakable is the flashback. There's a part where he's uh, saving. I'm not really spoiling anything. I don't think Unbreakable is really old. If you haven't seen it, like, but this is also not a spoiler. <laughs> like, this is not That's going true. to spoil. Th- okay. So there's and okay. If you have not seen Unbreakable, I highly recommend it. Right. So the way that Quentin Tarantino describes Unbreakable, right, is if you had Superman on Earth and he did not know that he was Superman. Boom. 
He's like, Pitch. The, he said the one ro- uh, bad problem or the one problem that Unbreakable had was with its marketing. It didn't know how to market it. See, I don't remember it being marketed or coming out. I, like, I don't know how old we were when it came out either. Yeah, Probably I don't really remember that maybe either. Maybe middle school or high school. I don't really remember that either. I, I just remember uh, as a kid finding like all of the the like the drawings of the comic books and stuff like that, and and mm. Mr. Glass like yeah, yeah, working yeah. in the comic. He like ran a comic book yeah. store. And I, like I remember like just falling for that when I was you know. Young. 13 or whatever yeah. you know um but yeah and it's also paced really really well um yeah. which is something that like that m night Shyamalan can do really really well with smaller movies but for some reason he can't did with you big movies. ever see what is it called after earth no i haven't Me i neither. heard that it's it's like better than people said yeah like it got panned too hard yeah interesting see my thing is like <clears throat> i'll watch anything with will smith in it mm-hmm. so i want to see it because I love Will Smith. What is your... I don't know if we... I've, I mean, I feel like I kind of can grasp your opinion of Jaden Smith, but what's your actual Dude, opinion of Jaden Smith? I like Jaden Smith like as a person. I think he's an interesting idea of a person. What do you think of him like as an artist? Do you listen to his music? Do you? I've never listened to his music. I've heard Sire's really good. I haven't listened to it, though. I've, I'm, I might have listened to a few songs um, and stuff. I, I like know. him... I don't dislike him as an actor... I feel like he hasn't done a lot of big... I mean, he was in, like, the Get Down. And obviously, when he was a kid, he was in stuff, you know. He was in, like, the Karate Kid remake. And I like the Get Down season one. I never saw season two. I never saw season two. Either. I heard season two wasn't but very good. I, uh... Yeah, I liked him specifically. Yeah, I liked him in the Get Down. Um, obviously, I mean, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna judge him for what he was like when he acted as a kid. Just like I'm not gonna look okay. back Did you, on the first Harry Potter movie and be like, "Those kids sucked at acting." But they're okay, eleven. Okay, but why did you say that? Did you not find Karate Kid good? I thought Karate Kid was okay. I don't really remember and it too number well. one, like so, like I think it was fine. Like, for me, no, the problem with Karate Kid, the Jackie Chan Karate Kid, was the fact that it was just jacket like, on, jacket was really, off. That that was super. That's the biggest dumb. sin of that movie, okay. guys. Did if they you not have not seen they were the doing? Jackie Chan Karate Kid, we are not fucking around with you. Okay. <laughs> There is okay, so all of the wax on, wax off shit that you had in the fucking uh, the original karate the original kid. Ralph Macchio, <laughs> uh, Karate Kid, right? They replaced that with a jacket. Jackie Chan talking to Jaden Smith about a jacket, who is the main protagonist. He's the Ralph Macchio character, yeah. and uh, Mr. Miyagi is played by Jackie Chan, mm-hmm. and Jackie Chan straight Who's up good in that movie. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's any bad performances, but from a creative standpoint. <laughs> Someone came up with the idea, like, oh, we should have Jackie Chan telling Jaden Smith. Jacket on. Jacket on. Jacket off. Jacket off. <laughs> like, repeated over and over and he, again. Over and over again <laughs> says, jacket off to this young boy. How did no one realize they were I, doing I, that? Th- there had to be. There, there, was, there was absolutely, like, people and they like, were just giggling like, you know in the what? back. People. People we're gonna more, roll with it. Were they like people are more mature than this? They won't <laughs> no, think no, it's funny. no one the will hear. To that is no. no one will hear "jack it off" <laughs> in consecutive syllables. And actually, oh jeez. Um, um, but okay, but I did not like get bothered by Jaden Smith in that movie. I think no, no, I thought no. he was a charismatic little kid, yeah, and he's, he's like he was, dancing. He's, like, oh, if Jaden Smith is anything, he's charismatic. Yeah. If yeah. like the one thing you can't say he isn't is charismatic. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think he catches too much heat. I oh yeah, for sure. Well, I think people don't take him seriously because of his dad. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I mean, they they literally say that in Kawhi, the Childish Gambino album. Yeah, do you really like that shit? You like? Yeah. <laughs> yeah do you really James think Coke is better than dropping, Pepsi? Uh, I don't remember. The exact he's out line. here dropping knowledge, but yeah. you don't respect him because he's, he's Jaden Smith. Smith. Because he's Jaden Smith. Smith. Do you really like Coke more than Pepsi? <laughs> or do you just <laughs> yeah, like how it sold it to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, man. But I think that's real. I think that because of who his dad is, half the people that hear anything about him are going to literally just be like, you're only able to do this because of your dad. Which is like, it's a huge part of Hollywood. There's so much nepotism in Hollywood. And I don't think it inherently means someone is or isn't good at something. But it's also like, kind of, you're like, oh, I get why people are thinking this because he'll like tweet something like, you know, he, what I are follow, shoes? Really? I follow him on Twitter and I started following him on Twitter because of his nonsense. Mm-hmm. And he isn't that nonsensey on Twitter anymore. He, 
He pops in every once in a while. There's, a lot, of, there's weird. a lot of but there's like, a lot of gems out there. But oh, the old gems. There's some crazy <laughs> stuff he tweeted. But I mean, then again, he was like 16, 17 years old. If you go back and look at my Facebook from when I was in high school, it's cringy. You know, you get memories now when you see it. It's mm-hmm. like I I put that on Facebook. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. I, I said raw. I said raw way too much. Yeah. It's and it's like in ten years, like we're gonna look back and like oh, on man, this, we actually we said that we're gonna podcast. be able to watch ourselves be idiots. <laughs> How cool is that? That's part of growing up, man. Yeah, um, that's part of the life. But reeling it way back in, Dark Phoenix. Dark Phoenix. <laughs> why? So why is it just because you're so much more hype for Creed so two and Fantastic I love the X Men. I love the X Men, but I think the X Men movies are very inconsistent. So I approach Dark Phoenix with excitement, but with like, you know, I'm like, I'll wait and see. I'm going to see it, but like, we'll see how you do. You know, you have, I feel like maybe they have to impress me a little more because of their inconsistencies in the past. Whereas when I go into a Marvel movie, I'm all in. An MCU movie, I'm like locked in and I'm like, this is going to be awesome. So my mindset's a little different going in. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's something I need to fix. Maybe I need to approach movies differently, just the way I see them. Maybe I should approach everything being like, this is going to be awesome. Or and like then, hoping that. Hoping, it's yeah. Awesome. Well, I, mean, I obviously hope Dark Phoenix is awesome. I love the cast. I, I mean, obviously the storyline's iconic. And they did such a bad job the first time they tried it that like, how much yeah. worse can they do? Yeah. Like yeah. X Men Three is really bad. I just, I just really like that actress. Sophie Sansa Turner. Stark. Yeah, Sophie, Sophie Turner. Turner. Yeah. That's it. You know, I've, I've seen people be like, you know, she said herself, she was like, I'm not as good an actress as a lot of the other people. That could have played Jean, but because I was on Game of Thrones, I got the role. Like, hmm. something along those lines. But I think she's awesome as Sansa. Mm-hmm. Especially, like, the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. As, she's, as Sansa's gotten older and kind of given more agency as a character. Mm-hmm. I think she's done an awesome job. Yeah. And, I mean, like I said earlier, you can't really say much about any of the kids' performances in X-Men Apocalypse. Because they're not given anything to do. They cut the one scene from the movie that let them, like, be kids. There's like a scene where like go to the mall and they're just like hanging out, which probably would have been like the best scene in that movie. I, I wish they made more uh, like ca- character focused X Men yeah, universe absolutely. shit. I was so excited when they announced New Mutants as like this like low budget horror thing, and then the trailer came out and I was just like, that yeah, looks kind of generic. It looks really generic, and plus you have a character on your roster of mutants whose thing is creating hallucinations so it's like all right oh that's i wonder what's gonna happen yeah you have one like evil doctor and one mutant who can make hallucinations i wonder what's gonna happen in this movie right kind of a bummer um but again another game of thrones actress in that one yeah maisie Maisie williams Williams. maisie williams yeah playing i I think the coolest thing about that movie is like weird like deep cut x-men characters which i think is fun yeah 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 that that could be interesting but like so uh, Really, like, the, has there been any other X Men universe like character focused shit other than Logan? Deadpool, you could argue, but not really. Um, I don't think so. Logan's amazing. Logan's great. Logan is really so like good. Logan. I really like Logan. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like, just more shit like that. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, more, and the, I guess is, you could argue all of the solo Wolverine movies are more character focused than the team movies. But, the, but Logan is by but, far but, the best but, one because <laughs> because majority of them are because bad. Uh, what is it called? X Men Wolverine, which I think overseas was called like Wolverine Samurai, which is such a cool name, and they didn't use it in America. The one Wait, where he it, goes well, to Japan. That's the Wolverine. The Wolverine. That's, yes, the, that's Wolverine. the Wolverine. X Men Origins Wolverine is the is, one with fake Deadpool. With Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, that's not Deadpool. Right. The fake Deadpool. That Deadpool constantly references as not being Deadpool mm-hmm. in Deadpool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's bad. That movie's bad. That movie's really bad. <sighs> yeah. So, so I, I mean, I like Dark Phoenix. I like the – I just – I like the story of Dark Phoenix. Well, yeah, and it's I an wanted, iconic. I wanted, the storyline's iconic. I, I, I'm looking forward to seeing Sophie Turner and mm-hmm. Taylor Sheridan play opposite each other and, like, going through Ty that Sheridan? art together. What did I say? Taylor. Is it? Oh, is it? It's Ty, Ty Sheridan? Sheridan. Who's Taylor Sheridan? I don't know. I made that up. No, it might be real, but I don't know. Sheridan is also a hotel chain, I believe. <laughs> so who knows what's going on? <laughs> There's a Sheridan in Thailand. Yeah, sure. Called the Taylor Sheridan. I don't know Sheridan. what's going on. That's yeah, the Ty there you Sheridan. go. But yeah, uh, 
I like Ty Sheridan a lot. I liked him in um, the movie that just came out over the summer. Like Jaden Smith's favorite movie of all time, by the way. Uh, the, the video game movie. Jeez. Oh, Ready Player One. Ready Player, one. Yeah, Ready Ready Player, Player one. one. yeah, that's Jaden Smith's like, favorite movie Did you movie read that? Ever. I feel like I've never read Ready money. Player One. No. I, I really enjoyed that movie, though. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought it was really cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was a fun movie. Mm-hmm. It's kind of weird to look at it. Like, I don't know. Like, it doesn't look bad, but it's just kind of weird because it's like all CG for big parts of the movie. You know what I mean? It looks I good. mean, I would say like 75% of the movie yeah. at least is Like CG. a huge chunk because mm-hmm. it all takes place in this video game world. Mm-hmm. But it's like just kind of weird. But very good. Fun, fun movie. Cool chase scenes, cool action sequences. Mm-hmm. I, w- I wouldn't say it. I don't know. Like, you know I what? Can it... I say though? There's like, oh wait, I, w- I don't want to spoil anything for it, so I won't say it. There's something you... about the there's something about the villain that kind of disappoints me, but oh, it's okay. like kind of it's not really a spoiler, but it is kind of. Don't spoil it. I'm don't not gonna. It. No, I'm not. It's too okay. new to spoil. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to as far as Dark Phoenix. Like, well, yeah, I hope there's I think, more character shit. Well, I think any X Men movie should be approached as a character study because I think there's some of the the best characters in comics. But th- but that's like kind of the problem is that like because it's such there's like so an many. ensemble there's cast. There's so many of them. There's yeah. so many of them. It's hard yeah. to focus. Yeah, that's true. Too much on one, you know. You almost have to be like this is the Cyclops X-Men movie. This is the Jean Grey uh, X-Men movie. This is the Nightcrawler movie. Like they have to you have to elevate one member of the cast above the rest to make a team movie more focused, mm-hmm. which may or may not hurt it. Mm-hmm. But all right. I'm excited. I would say, yeah. So number two movie that I'm or trailer Creed? that I was excited for Creed, Creed two, Dude, for sure. We like Chris, like Chris said, we watched the, these trailers like right before we recorded, and like I was ready to like run through a wall after that Creed trailer. Oh yeah, dude, it gets me when DMX kicks in, dude. Uh, yeah, it's, oh it's, for sure hype. it's for oh! sure hype. It's for sure It's for sure hype. Gets the like, people going. So when you first heard that like Creed two was going to be. Like made. what was yeah well okay. like what was your approach so because it, I they Rocky four almost immediately after Creed came out because it was so successful Creed one is awesome I right. love that movie the, I, yeah I agree full I disclosure really like Michael B Jordan is like my favorite actor in the world I'm I love Michael really? B Jordan and we have the same birthday so I have something going for me and that's yeah, what it is obviously that's how that's how talent works but that's if how you have the same works. if yeah. you have the same like i have the same birthday as uh john mayer exactly and, and you're uh, tim robbins and you're an amazing so talented person because uh-huh. of it so yeah just like i'm awesome it's, because it's michael like, B. jordan yeah yeah osmosis basically yeah exactly birthday osmosis mm-hmm. but yeah and also tessa thompson's awesome uh but when creed 2 was announced i was super into it i was like let's go baby new rocky franchise and i'm gonna actually see these ones because i've only ever seen rocky You've only seen the first one. The first Rocky. So even though I've never seen Rocky Four, right? Rocky Four is the one with uh Is the one with Ivan Drago. With Ivan Drago, which is his son is going to be fighting Adonis Creed in this movie based on yeah. the trailer. Yeah, and in yeah, in, in Rocky Four, Ivan Drago kills, kills Apollo, Apollo Creed. Creed his which dad. like when so when they mm-hmm. announced uh what the storyline was going to be mm-hmm. for Creed two, my instant reaction was like, Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's kinda tacky. Like that oh, was like dude. sort of like But the, I think in, that's kind of like part of Rocky is being a little tacky. Uh, part that, of the universe. That's for sure. Well out of all of the movies that are like the <laughs> most like uh tacky and cliche, Rocky Four is it. But like, like he's the, fighting this huge yeah, yeah, Russian, yeah. and there's like a like, robot and a in robot Russia. butler and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's super it's, weird. It's tacky as fuck. But like, so I'll, let me tell you my first thought. I was like, Creed two's being made, and then they were like, Ryan Coogler's not directing, and I was immediately disappointed because uh-huh. Ryan Coogler's amazing, mm-hmm. and specifically Ryan Coogler and Michael B. Jordan together, mm-hmm. amazing. Fruitvale Station, Black Panther, really, really great stuff they've made together. Um, I don't know who's directing Creed two, but I'm pretty sure they were like chosen by <laughs> by Ryan Coogler. by Ryan Coogler. Mm-hmm. So I trust Ryan Coogler because right. I have literally no reason not to. He's mm-hmm. done nothing to give me a reason not to trust him. Right. So I immediately I was like, okay, cool, I'm excited. But I think like the way present, like maybe you're right, maybe it's kind of a tacky idea. But I think the way it's presented is super cool. Like the dude they cast, I don't know who that guy is. I'm glad it's not Sage Northcutt, which was rumored. That would have been stupid. 
or he he's wanted, also tiny. or he wanted to do it. He's or something. also tiny. They would they would have had to do some like Gandalf Frodo shit with in Michael order B. To Jordan. Shoot. You think? Well, he's so much. This dude is so much bigger than Michael B. Jordan. Well, and Sage Northcutt is so much smaller than Michael B. Jordan. Is he? Sage Northcutt. When what does he not, fight? When he's not cut. When he doesn't cut weight. Doesn't he? Fight, I, I would, I would he say fight he's for sure forty five or fifty five. He probably how, walks around like hundred sixty. How big is pounds. Michael B. Jordan? Though. Michael B. Jordan is jacked. A dude, a dude thick with multiple C's. Jacked. A dude's <laughs> thick. Uh, I don't think. I don't know. That w- and and but like and you plus, have to keep in mind he though, has to be Ivan Drago's son. Mike, yeah, he's got to be huge. He's got to be yeah, a big. He's got to be very scary looking. He's got to be very motherfucker. intimidating. Yeah, I, I don't know who that guy is. Plus, Neither, dude, shout out, dude, Dolph Lundgren's on the comeback. That dude's in Creed two. He was. In the last season of Arrow, which was not good, but he was in it. <laughs> he was, and he's going to be an Aquaman. You know that dude's got like a PhD? That dude's a fucking genius. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That like, they make, oh, so, okay, so I'm not sure if you've ever seen any of the, what, what's the Expendables? The Expendables I've movies. never watched it. So he's so. in at some least of, one of, of them, the Expendables. One of them? I, I, they all blend together yeah, for they're, me. They're all one thing. He's in, a, he's in a couple of them, and they okay. always call, like re- reference him at like being a genius. And really? Stuff. Yeah. So wait, in the Expendables, is he Dolph Lundgren or is he a character? No, no, he's a character. Okay. He is a character. Um, you know what's weird but... to me? Terry Crews is in one of those movies. Mm-hmm. Terry Crews Why not? is not over the hill. Why not? Terry Crews is just getting but, going. But if you're if you're going to have a team of mercenaries, it's not like all of them have to be old people. They just need I mean, cool it, it motherfuckers. It seems like the bit, though. They just, the, the bit like, is having Rand, all of these dude, people that like S- Sylvester Stallone's already in like – uh, friends with yeah, and yeah, shit, yeah. you know. It's but like, like Randy Couture's in it, and like the only person who I've seen that's worse at acting than Randy Couture is, is Ronda Rousey, Rousey, who's also in the Expendables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, those movies—they're obviously not there to be masterclasses in acting. They're they're action. They're, yeah, they're just, just they're nonsense. It's they're they're meant to be my on. dad's favorite movies. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, Every dad's favorite movie, <laughs> The Expendables. Uh, we were talking about Creed two. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, Rocky. Were you, ex- were you expecting the baby in the trailer? No, but I, it, it didn't like surprise me. I wasn't like, oh my god, so there's a baby. My thing was it? like, obviously from the first movie, like in my head, I was like, they're they're gonna, you know, they're gonna get married or whatever down the line. I was expecting it to happen so quickly. I was like, that changes like everything about their relationship from the first movie. It becomes so much more serious. I don't know. I, I, I didn't. That was. That doesn't seem like that far of a jump for me. I mean, it's not. It's. It's obviously like literally like you know, one night of events away. And having a baby is not that big of a deal, dude. No, it's not a big. deal. I have at least seven. At all. Yeah, you've got Chris Jr., <laughs> Kyle Jr. I named. <laughs> you think I'm naming one of my kids after to you? Of course. Your other one's name is Davenport. <laughs> yeah. 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 Of That's course. That's not happening. I'll name my kid Wizard though. Wizard. Yeah. Don't name your kid Wizard. Why not? Wizard Stott? Wizard Stott. That's a bad name. That's Wizard a is a nickname. Name. Actually, I'll just a I'll D&D give them class. the last name Wizard. You're going to have a different last name than you? Yeah. So my kid's name is going to be Wizard Wizard. Wizard, Wizard. <laughs> Wizard Squared. <laughs> um, fuck, dude. We keep going on tangents. That's Creed. what this is. Creed. Oh, you want to do the next trailer? To, okay, let's go to the next trailer. You fuck want it. to? There's not, yeah, do you have not nothing really else to say about the Creed trailer? Uh, I'm I'm fucking really excited Sylvester for Stallone it. As like, like as Sylvester like tacky Stallone is looks that like he's I gonna do. be awesome again. There's like one line where he delivers where he's like, he died in my he's hands. A, dude, he's I'm a like, fucking killer. This dude is so good. He he is so much more than like the than, Expendables than like Steven Seagal. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. he he's so much more like that dude. No disrespect, but he's so much more than Dolph Lundgren. He might not be as smart as Dolph Lundgren, but he's right. a better actor. But yeah, and, <laughs> well, and he well he is an artistic force. Is the yeah, thing? Yeah, absolutely. Like the cool the coolest thing about Rocky one. So like I I love all movie. of the Rocky movies for like sort of different reasons, mm-hmm. right? But even, Rocky four was like Rocky my favorite. Balboa? Rocky four was my favorite growing up for certain reasons. A like the opponent. Like I just I he's love so the idea of Ivan uh, Ivan Drago. Mm-hmm. Like the just this huge motherfucking Russian, Russian scary just, dude. Yeah, who, who talks like this. Yeah, he 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 is like piece of iron. That's pretty that, good. It's, it's pretty dude, good it's accent. fucking scary. I, I watched Ra- a lot of Rocky Four. Where do you think <laughs> I hit it from? Um, but Rocky One, the reason Rocky One is so fucking cool is because it was like fucking Sylvester Stallone's coming out part. Yeah, for and sure. He worked so hard to he get wrote the movie made and directed or just wrote. Uh, I think he just wrote it. I think he just wrote it. I think he I'm just not wrote positive. it and started in it. Obviously, started in it. But like he and is amazing. He in it. 
fucking worked so hard yeah. to get that movie made that like Rocky's story is Sylvester Stallone's so, like, story. Rocky is to Sylvester Stallone as Deadpool is to Ryan Reynolds, is what you're saying. Yeah, but Ryan Reynolds <laughs> blew up. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds was way more famous than <laughs> Sylvester Stallone yeah. when he made Rocky. <laughs> but they love and care about those. But films yeah, R- Rocky One, I, I love it so much because it's like so intimate. Yeah, like you, you kind of you kind of get that because it's it, also it's, it's a passion project. It's like weird. Like I think it one. breaks tropes of sports movies at the time. Now it's created new tropes of sports movies. Yeah. So I watched a video on YouTube talking about uh, like how Rocky. If you watch, sit down and watch Rocky, mm-hmm. right, and you could track it. Mm-hmm. Literally, the so the uh, what is it called? Like the the call to action mm-hmm. doesn't come until halfway in the movie. Dude. Yeah, there's so it's that just Rocky first half of the movie, long time. that first half of the movie is just you getting to know Rocky. Yeah, with his fish and you know, turtles like, or whatever it is. Yeah, so like they always tell you in screenwriting courses and everything that like you should by t- page ten that you should have that call to action. Yeah, that you but it's like. Be, infusing conflict and everything every rule is like made to be broken and mm-hmm. it just takes the right person to break it yeah yeah but like literally they shouldn't be called rules yeah everything in screenwriting everything that like in, in all art, writing in, in all in, in all artistic endeavors there's mm-hmm. no rules there shouldn't be rules there's just, stuff it's just that, options there's, there's options that are proven to work you know what i mean like like yeah. when i'm in a fight you know what i mean like i can take a jab or i can fucking take somebody down yeah. but it depends on the opponent it depends mm-hmm. on the project it depends on the audience mm-hmm. that you're trying to go after Right. And Rocky was so fucking like it, it draws you in so much and, and it's so hype yeah. because you really get to know yeah. Rocky before anything happens. But before they amp up the, you know, the action and the, you know, the, the juice, the juice of the movie, the, mm-hmm. the, you know, the training montages and all the, mm-hmm. the stuff that is like maybe kind of tacky, but is but yeah. awesome. But but it, that doesn't really happen in Rocky one as much. There is no like he punches the meat. Huh? Doesn't he punch the meat in Rocky One? <coughs> yeah, but that that stuff wasn't really That's tacky so cool. to me. It's so cool. The tacky stuff is like, oh, like we're gonna have Rocky fighting a Russian, and yeah. then his best friend's gonna die. Like yeah. that's that's the the stuff that's know. like just I kind think... of tropey to me. Like, Maybe. uh, like I mean, Rocky One like seems like a tropey idea, but like it's 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 so well executed. It's, yeah, it's executed. It's if you like if you elevator pitched Rocky, your idea of it would be way different than what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the reason why I like Rocky Four. Mm-hmm. The greatest montage of all time. Oh, yeah? The greatest training montage of all time. In any movie of all time. I don't I don't know any other montages. I mean, if you want to like be like technical and shit, like like the American Film Institute is going to say like, <laughs> oh well like Sergei Eisenstein's Who montage knows, in Battleship what, Potemkin was what is was the, better. What is the montage in Rocky Four? Okay, so the montage in Rocky Four is uh Sylvester Stallone, uh after the death of Apollo Creed, yeah. picks up the uh, the the fight against he Ivan fights, Drago, he's gonna fight Ivan and Drago, obviously yeah. uh, uh, Adrian is like, don't take this. Yeah, obviously, because he this, just killed his best friend yeah, in the ring. Just, yeah, like which Rocky feels this. extra guilty about because he wanted to throw in the towel. Exactly, and Apollo's in like, no, corner. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot of like you know juice in, in the character yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So he ends up going uh, to Russia to train. Okay. Right. Is he and out in the wilderness of Siberia? He's dude. It's it's all. He's on on a snowy mountain. <laughs> no fucking in a log cabin. Is he like carrying boulders Th- around? This motherfucker. He's <laughs> working out. Okay, so he's he's not carrying boulders around. He carries around a log in oh. snow, right? While the okay. while like uh, a, f- a fucking car is trying to fucking come after him oh and shit. He's like stepping through so, the snow. Okay, so running up Creed, mountains, in right? Creed two trailer, and, and, in the, and he's like in the in like a barn, right? Okay. And you brought up boulders. He's got like a net full of fucking boulders. Okay. He's going like this, fucking lifting up the the rocks and everything. And he <laughs> does this thing on the table. I don't know if you ever seen uh, this. Uh, anyone do this? But like the fucking cool ass ab thing. He's like on a table, uh-huh. and he has his. He's like completely inverted. Like his feet are up. up yeah, in yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he fucking slowly lowers that. Oh, shit. Like, dude, Sylvester his, was so. Like this, he was so jacked for those movies, fucking, dude. He was he in such good shape. Up, and it just it looks so fucking cool. You're so. Like, there's definitely gonna be a montage in Creed two, because you see Michael B. Jordan put this bandana on and grab a hammer in the middle of the mm-hmm. desert. In the middle of the desert, and he's like running in the desert with a right. car following him. Uh-huh. Give me another great montage scene. Yeah, a spiritual sequel montage mm-hmm. scene. Yeah, but Give yeah, me that. coolest montage of all time. And and then so this is how they juxtapose it, right? So you have Rocky working out in this log cabin oh, so, in the middle so of the snow, right? Ivan and Drago's then they show, also and then they show it. Ivan Drago. And he's like in this facility, yeah, fucking like, really like a fucking end. robot. People are sit. There's <laughs> people with glasses. Sitting, they're like taking notes. Taking notes. <laughs> Wait, I don't know what they're. Uh, I don't know what they're doing. He there. is punching with ten thousand 
uh, the force. <laughs> They literally Basically. show that. They show him hitting something. <laughs> Yo, and it says 4,000 no, pounds. That's real. Force. That's in the UFC Institute. And mm-hmm. Francis Ngannou has the record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but this, Ivan Drago, that, it's probably triple what. Uh, whatever Francis, Francis got. Or whatever Francis got. Yeah, it's like so unreal. Because he's. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but he's doing that. They show him taking steroids. Oh, they show he's cheating? Oh, yeah, dude. Oh. oh, yeah. And he's like running around a track and shit. Oh, it's so dude, fucking cool. Dude, what a cheater. So Yo, but how realistic is that? Because literally all of the Russians weren't allowed at the Olympics because mm-hmm. they were taking steroids. <laughs> okay. We'll jump. We will jump to Fantastic Beasts. The Crimes of Grindelwald. Listen, let me preface this whole conversation by letting the beautiful people of the internet know I love Harry Potter. Those of you with video I don't, see I don't my think... beautiful phone case. <laughs> so I don't, I don't think anyone... I don't know if I know Potter. anyone that's that likes Harry Potter more than you. More than me? There's yeah. people. There's definitely people. I will never. Obviously, but yeah. I don't know them. Is what I'm saying. That, yeah. Okay. I'll give you that. I don't. I don't know them. I'll give you that. I've met a lot of people, dude. Okay. <laughs> you have met a lot. Of I people. have met a lot of people. You've met a lot of people. I have yet to find I someone who has really, really love Harry Potter. Who has read Harry Potter at least a dozen times? Every, I read them every book at least a once a year. Sometimes twice a year. I reread them. So at least a dozen times. Oh, yeah, for book. sure. Absolutely. Every single book a dozen times. Yeah, for sure. And you've watched every single movie. Probably less than I've read them, actually. Okay. okay. Yeah. Probably less than I've read them, which is kind of weird, but... did Dude, did I tell you about the uh, the YouTube channel that I like cr- sort of stumbled upon? Is it anything it, to do with Harry Potter? Yes, it does. Oh, okay. O- okay, so it's uh this dude... Like, I think the first video that I saw was this dude saying that... uh. Like it, it, the title of the the video is like why um, Harry Potter's score uh, isn't good. Mm-hmm. Let, just you just made me do my own. It's a little bash. it's a little clickbaity. It's a little clickbaity. Okay. 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 But uh, so he has a three part series. This dude is fucking really knowledgeable. I think it's called uh, Into the Score. I feel uh, like I might have heard of something. No, like it's that. Inside the Score. That's okay. that's the okay. name of this. Shout out to fucking in uh fucking Inside the Score, Inside the score dude. This is a fucking YouTube really channel. cool okay. YouTube channel. Okay. Where uh this dude that knows a lot about music, a lot about yep. classical music and yep. he's very informed. Mm-hmm. Um more than He we breaks know. down like all eight movies. Okay. And the uh the how the different composers, because it's not like the entire mm-hmm. series was composed by John Williams. Yes, yeah, he did the first. He, movie. he did the first three. Okay, but he created the theme. Yes, the he famous did. theme. He did the famous theme. Yeah. but like he broke down how basically like where it started to fall off was the third one after he because left. like. So by the like, way, the third the, movie is the best movie. Mm-hmm. And no uh, questions asked. but yeah, so he like breaks down like all of these motifs and stuff. It's mm-hmm. fucking super interesting mm-hmm. how. Uh, uh, he he. So he breaks down all of these motifs in the first two movies, mm-hmm. like how there's a motif. So like, what a can you explain a motif better than I can? No. Okay. So what he explains as a motif it's is like, like a, an argument, like it's like an idea. A, yeah, it's like a musical <clears throat> thesis. So when you have like an idea, right? Like so, there's many ideas within the writing um, of Harry Potter. You have themes of family. Tons. You have themes Race. of uh, of race. You have themes Race is huge. of uh, of loneliness, mm-hmm. right? So whenever they, it sh- that's shown on the screen, um, John Williams will sort of show like, oh, this is a family moment. Okay, this okay, is okay, okay. a moment yeah, yeah, where yeah. Harry Potter is feeling. And so in, in order to juxtapose that, right, he'll use the same motif, the same melody, mm-hmm. um, as the same few notes for family as he will with uh, – as, as he will with lo- loneliness, okay. right? But he'll augment it or yeah, he'll yeah, use yeah. different uh, instruments. Inverted or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That's um, really – dude – Scoring movies is an art like beyond my dude. I'm telling you, comprehension and it's it's amazing. Uh, uh, like the I, amount of work and thought that goes into it. So is nuts. Th- that's the titles of uh, of those videos will like piss you off at first. You'll be like, "What? Yeah. Like fucking Harry Potter music is dope." Yeah, right. But you'll watch it and be like, "Holy shit, this is fucking really good." Yeah, it makes you recognize a lot of shit and makes you in like more understand interested, it more understand it more and appreciate it more. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, inside the score, there's a, a three part series where about he analyzes all of the Harry Potter movies, and he and he talks about the the thing that I took away from it, like these motifs, right? How like by the fourth movie, they sort of completely abandoned these motifs. That's interesting. And he started uh, these composers started putting in more 
you could tell by uh, the, like the the farther the series goes on, mm-hmm. they started putting in more war drums and more. Uh, he called them ostinato- ostinatos, I think. Okay. Not, I'm not a fucking musical genius is, either, but... so I'm, yeah. Like I'm pretty sure he called them ostinatos. Okay. Um, but he, it's kind of like the as the series went on, it got farther away from John Williams and got closer to Hans Zimmer. Interesting. Um, because like th- th- it's like now, a big thing like, that's could happening. You, could you argue it's because the stakes are ramping up in the series and it's they're getting more mature and there's you know bigger like you know the end of the fifth movies the mm-hmm. Dumbledore Vo- or D- Voldemort duel and mm-hmm. obviously the seventh and eighth movies are you know the whole the finale of everything. You you might watch these videos, dude, and and and, 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 dis- and completely disagree yeah. with it, but you will for sure find them interesting. Yeah, yeah even yeah, yeah. if you do disagree with inside them. the score. You said? Yeah, inside the score. Very cool. Speaking of score, the music on the new trailer is that so fucking cool. violin. It's so cool Ooh. that quick paced violin, Ooh. and then of course they it's hit spicy. you. They hit you with the main theme at the end just to get the emotions flared up. Um, I would like to pat my own back and just say that I called the Jude Law casting of Dumbledore and it's like my dream. You knew that Jude I Law literally was going to be... said Jude Law should play young Dumbledore in the Fantastic Beast movies and then it happened and I was so proud of myself and I was like I could be a casting director. It's that easy. What, what like award show was like a few years ago? Was, was it like Chris Rock or somebody who was he was like you're like, who is Jude Law? <laughs> I have no idea. You don't remember that? No. And then like Sean Penn came out and he was like, he was like, Jude Law is actually one of our uh, most respected actors. And I think, uh, I think Jude Law is awesome. A lot of uh, appreciation. Dude, shout out to Jude Law. In the next year, he will have been in a uh, Wizarding World movie as they're not, the whole universe is not referred to. It's not, it's Harry. not the Harry Potter world. It's, it's J.K. Wizarding Rowling's world. Wizarding World. So because obviously like Harry's not involved in these movies. He's not born. So it's kind of weird. I get it. But get it. also, it's just the Harry Potter world. Like, mm-hmm. it's, it's what it is. Mm-hmm. But he's also going to be in Captain Marvel. So he'll be in a Marvel movie, too. Oh, shit. Shout I didn't know that. Shout out to Jude Law. Yeah, dude. He's in Captain Marvel. Is he in the trailer? He's playing, yeah. He's playing Marvel. I haven't seen the Who, trailer. in the comics, is the original Captain Marvel. Wait, hold on. His name is Marvel? Yeah, dude. It's He was made in, like, the 40s. It's stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. His name is Marvel? Yeah, he's an alien, dude. So, like, Mar space. Mar dash Vel. V-E-L-L? Yes. Not positive. There might be one L, but I think it's two. Marvel. Yes, that's his name. He is a. I want. Oh, is he supposed to be like I'm a John John kind of character? Get, a what? Like like a Martian Manhunter. Martian Manhunter. No, he's. I mean, he's an alien, but he can't shape shift and stuff. He does. Is he look green. Blue. Or is he just? He is blue. He is a Cree. Remember Ronan the Accuser from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, the villain from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. He's from the same race as that. Who also is back in this movie, by the way. Oh, okay. He's back in this movie uh, in the in Captain Marvel, which yeah. is a prequel. Um, but yeah, Jude Law is in Captain Marvel as Marvel, who in the comics is the original Captain Marvel, while Carol Danvers was known as Miss Marvel. But that's stupid. So they said, skip the lame stuff, and let's get to her being Captain Marvel. To Brie Larson being awesome. Th- that's her name, Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, yeah. Carol Danvers. Mm-hmm. Is Again, this going to be set? Uh, th- 90s. Oh, okay. That's why Samuel Jackson and. Clark Gregg are like he, he has like a full head of hair dude shit. that de-aging technology looks amazing in the trailer yeah they look great yeah Phil's got his swoop of hair going I respect it <laughs> I admire it and I'm jealous of it but uh enough of MCU Harry Potter Harry Potter so the big thing that freaked everyone out about this trailer was the Nagini thing which I literally paused in the middle of the trailer to make sure you caught it uh, yeah, I I wasn't listening that yeah. close. Like, so, the first time I heard it. Uh, Credence, which is um, oh, what's his name? He's awesome. Puts they do that. That plays Flash. The, yeah, do that play Flash? Ezra Miller. I got there. Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, he's played plays Credence, who kind of a surprise is back. I mean, not it, it, the end of the first movie was kind of like up in the air as to what his deal was, but um, he's back and he he whispers Nagini. Mm-hmm. to a girl in this mm-hmm. seeming she's circus just... and she turns into a snake mm-hmm. yep. and people lost their minds because is she Voldemort's Nagini? Or was Voldemort just like, that's a pretty cool Well, name. so, I'm so gonna make maybe, home. maybe. So check this out. JK Rowling on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Um, people are like, is she an animagus that turns into a snake? You know, what's going on here? She's a maledictus. I don't know what that means. You're not supposed to. I'm going to explain it to you. Okay. <laughs> right, I just wanted to sound cool. I wanted to be dramatic. 
<laughs> a, mal- a maledictus mm-hmm. is like a curse passed on from mother to daughter oh, of shit. someone who is slowly becoming an animal. How crazy is that? So it's like it's like a it's like an animagus with a uh, a deadline. Like, kind of. That's my understanding. I might be wrong. Obviously, right. the movie's not out yet. We don't know anything that is concrete yet. Okay. But the way that I... But she came out and the said... The way that I interpreted the tweet, okay. which I'm pretty sure, it was like, they are slowly becoming uh-huh. the beast that they turn into. That's and she happens cool. to turn into a snake. That's pretty fucking cool. With the same name as Voldemort's snake. That's fucking cool. It's super interesting. Yeah. But like, and Voldemort can talk to snakes, so he, you know he knew. You know he knows that's a lady. Uh-huh. And then he was like, I'm going to make this lady my, a horcrux. My fucking horcrux. Man. That's messed up. Yeah. But he also is like, he seems like he loves that snake like more than anything. It's mm-hmm. super weird. Does yeah. he have like a weird relationship with this snake? Who knows what's going on? Mm-hmm. But like, I w- obviously there's four, including Crimes of Grindelwald, there's four more movies left in this in this series. Leading up to the ultimate showdown between Dumbledore and Grindelwald, which is more hyped than. So anything. at the end, they're going to have five? There's going to be five, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, five movies. Um, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. Originally, it was going to be three, and then they upped it. I guess JK was like, I got more ideas. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it, I'm super interested to see uh, like what what this means. So and like I don't like people were like hot taking all over the place about like what it means. And it was like you haven't seen the movie yet. You can't liter- you literally can't say anything. You don't know anything yet. All you know is there is a character and her name. I read the book. Her know. name seems to be Nagini, mm-hmm. and she turns into a snake. Mm-hmm. What if it's not even her name? What if it's like a weird like command word or something? Right. Who, who knows what it is? It could be anything. But it seems like. But it would be. Her name is Nagini. And she turns into a snake. Right. Which is crazy. Right. And that's just the tip of the iceberg with this for me. For this movie. I'm so excited. Okay. So, so like, I liked Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. But I was like, I didn't have like the, you know, the, the full the full feels. Of a Harry Potter movie. Of a Harry movie. Potter movie. And I think it's mostly because Newt is kind of like hard to connect with because right. he just like hates people he's kind of isolated he's like he's very did, yeah. isolated but like tina is a great character and like, like you awesome. also like sort of like parallel to harry potter a lot because i feel like you're just very like you evaluate like you uh value friendship like more than oh anything. i super value and friendship. like like harry potter like the number one thing yeah that you, like, is like is drawn the family to the family you find mm-hmm. not the family that you have mm-hmm. like all that kind of stuff yeah and i think that's also a thing clearly going to be a thing in this movie as Newt and Tina and Queenie and the best muggle in the world, Jacob, mustache man. Yeah, yeah, okay. He's awesome. That's that's the that's Pudge Boy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I can't remember his his name, but he's awesome. Um, all coming together. But like, there's so many things I'm so interested to learn about. Like, why are Dumbledore and Newt close? Obviously, Dumbledore was Newt's teacher, but like, what's their relationship now that Newt's graduate? Newt's got this brother who he seemingly like hates. Like in the trailer, he's like, "That's like the best moment of my life," and he like ties him up. Right. And his brother's like this like badass Auror who's engaged to, like, the girl that Newt loves. Zoe Kravitz's character that he has the picture oh, of okay, in the first yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, They're yeah, engaged, right. dog. Okay. So it's, like, that's this weird. whole thing, in like, in the trailer, Zoe's like, that's weird. you've never seen a, a, a monster you can't love, Newt. And then they mm. show Grindelwald, and you're mm. like, is he gonna have, like, a weird thing where he, like, maybe, like, connects with Grindelwald? What's your, what's your, what's your opinion on uh, Johnny, Depp. Johnny Depp being Grindelwald? So when I first heard about it, I thought it was kind of weird. I was like, that's not what... That's not how I imagined Grindelwald at uh-huh. all. And then, like, he looks weird as hell, right? With the super dyed hair and the different colored eyes, mm-hmm. which is, like, a thing that Grindelwald has. But th- I don't know if you noticed it in the trailer. There's a scene where Jude Law Dumbledore is looking into the mirror of Erised from the first Harry Potter movie. Right. Remember that? The, remember yeah, that yeah. Movie? So when he looks in the mirror, I don't know if you remember, but he tells Harry he sees him holding a nice pair of socks. Clearly lying. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have always thought that maybe when he looked in the mirror, he saw his family all alive and together. His sister and his mom and his dad all, all alive and all together. Uh, but when he looks in the mirror in that trailer, he sees Grindelwald, young Grindelwald, who they brought back from the uh, – they brought back the same two actors that played young Dumbledore and young Grindelwald in I think the seventh movie maybe. Right. I'm not positive, but there's like pictures of them and – there's scenes of Grindelwald like stealing the Elder Wand and stuff like that. Right. Um, he looks in the mirror and he sees young Grindelwald and he looks completely different. He's like a normal, he's like a hot boy. 
He's like blonde. Which he looks kind of like like Draco Malfoy. He's got like slick back hair and beautiful bright eyes. And so like the idea of him getting like corrupted as time goes on and uh-huh. as he's doing more evil shit, that he now looks like gross Johnny Depp is super cool to me. Okay, so what is the relationship between Dumbledore and Grindelwald? All we know <clears throat> for sure is that uh, they were like academic peers, right? That were that like spent a summer being neighbors, basically, uh-huh. and planning kind of world domination together. It's implied that at the very least, Dumbledore's in love with him, right? At the very least, right? We don't know if the feelings are reciprocated. But at the very least, Dumbledore's in love with him. It's right. implied. It's not positive, but, you know. But J.K. Rowling came out and said that Dumbledore's gay, right? After the series was <clears throat> done or after a certain amount of the books were done, yes, yeah, she said that Dumbledore's so, gay. Right. It's never, like, a thing that's part of the books, which, like, some people complain about as being, like, a misrepresentation. But, like, I don't know. I feel like it, why would it come up? Dumbledore's super old. What do you mean, like, a misrepresentation? Just, like, like, it's it's like uh, like people would argue that you know, you're you're shoehorning in a gay character after it's done to try to make it seem like your cast is diverse. If that makes sense. I don't think that J.K. Rowling's doing that though. I don't either. J.K. I mean, Rowling is someone who puts so much thought into so her much, world. There's so much history. That I doubt that, that she's just like, oh, it's gay. Like, yeah, like, she, I'm uh, the same way. Uh, yeah, I agree with Dumbledore's you. Dumbledore's gay. I agree with you. And I think the Grindelwald stuff kind of makes it obvious. It, and he's also like more, and I don't mean like mean to say like flamboyant in a homosexual way, but he is more flamboyant in the books than oh, he yeah. is he's, in the movie. Dude, he dresses like lavish and, fa- and fabulous. Yeah, yeah. He wears like purple robes all the time. Yeah, where he's like more like... And, Gandalfy in, in in the movies. Yeah, in the flashback or in flashback sequences when Harry goes into the the pensive, there are scenes where he sees young Dumbledore like dressed like a muggle, but he's wearing mm-hmm. like purple suits and mm-hmm. stuff. I wish they would lean into that more in the Fantastic Beast movies and be like show Dumbledore dressed like a wild man. Right. Jude Law being like, look at this mm-hmm. crazy, you know, pink suit I'm wearing or something, right. like nuts. But I think maybe at the same time he's clearly trying to lay low, you know. Mm-hmm. Him and Newt are meeting in like secret places. And, right. I can't, he's like, I can't move on. Why can't he move on Grindelwald? Why can't he just go take care of this nonsense? Is it just his personal feelings where he feels like if if he sees him, he won't be able to do it? Is it because he knows about the Deathly Hallows? And he does he know that Grindelwald has the Elder One and he doesn't think he can beat him? What is the... Dude, what are the... There's so much going on. There's so much. Where, do, where does... Uh... Where does the first Fantastic Beast like fall for you? Like In, in the movies spectrum? Yeah, yeah. Um, compared to all of them. I think it's better than probably most of the movies. It's not as good as the third movie. The third movie is the best in the whole series. I think I probably like the last movie more just because it's like, you know, it's the culmination of everything. I might like five more. Five is cool. Five could have been way cool. Like it's, it's, so it's, it's, it's weird. kind of middling. It's like. weird. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like the 75th percentile. It's the okay. upper third right. or whatever. Um, it's just weird. Like, th- th- being such a huge fan of the books, there's just so much that's not in the movies. Mm-hmm. Like, and there's certain movies that, like, are, are like, more at fault. Like, the fourth movie is the most at fault of leaving out awesome stuff. Mm-hmm. But then there's, like, other movies that I think do a really good job of capturing the spirit and everything. And I think the actors, specifically, are so good. Literally across the board. Mm-hmm. They're... I can't think of an actor where I'm like they didn't they didn't portray that character the way I imagine them outside of like the one scene of Dumbledore being like Harry did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire <laughs> and he like freaks out I'm like whoa dude very aggressive there homie. very aggressive um, but it's in I mean that's also you know the tragedy of um, making Ralph, movies it, Ralph Harris was that his name Rich Richard Harris yeah Richard Harris. passing away and they mm-hmm. had to make, get a new Dumbledore right um, but like I, yeah I feel like. With the Harry Potter movies, you're obviously going to get that chronic. It was based like on, on a book. book. The books are better like, syndrome. Like a Harry Potter that everyone TV show has would be so lit. Yeah, because they could Ooh. include more. Yeah, but there's still going to be the the complex that people yeah. have. The the books are better. I mean, you, complex. it's a, it's a different form of storytelling. You can't be inside the character's head mm-hmm. in a movie or TV. But show. it's also like like people. I don't think people enjoy. Uh, enough of the like they're both informing each other and making each other better kind of thing yeah, i feel that, i think i think you're definitely right like reading the books after seeing the movies and you have the picture of the character and you're hearing the music in, in your head yeah, that's and def- you can visualize things better that, i would definitely say that that's true yeah like like 
um, uh, Zack Snyder uh, as as for all of his all faults, his faults, all of his faults. Listen, right? the dude makes beautiful stuff. He makes beautiful stuff, it's but beautiful. he also there are certain things that he said before that I'm like I can really vibe with that. Mm-hmm. So like when uh, before he made Watchmen, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, fucking Watchmen, the graphic novel is incredible. Yeah, is incredible. And he tried like visually. Watchmen almost shot for shot, shot for shot remake. But a lot of people are like, oh well, obviously since it's shot for shot, uh, a remake, like. Uh, it's just as good as the graphic novel. No. A lot of people will say that. No. And I'm like, no. there's a lot of things philosophically that Zack Snyder gets wrong with uh, Watchmen that. Well, I mean, Zack Snyder has a that weird Watchmen gets right. Jesus complex. Huh? Zack Snyder has a weird Jesus complex. He's like obsessed with making everything about religion and God. Well, that and he like, so there's a specific scene, like just to show, for example, like a specific scene that like he just got wrong with yeah. the Watchmen uh, movie. There's a scene where uh, uh, fucking uh, Maylene Ackerman's character, mm-hmm. I forgot what her name was, uh, and Night Owl are mm-hmm. fighting in an alley. Yep. Right. And they show like they're, they're fucking like throwing people against walls and shit yeah. and doing all this like superhero shit. Yeah. They're not supposed to be. Isn't that. the point of Watchmen those characters that they're like below that? It, they're not. They're down of to it. earth. That's yeah. why, it, like, when they see uh, Mr. Manhattan, right? They so, are, like, you're saying that like the action sequences in a Watchmen movie or show, which is coming to HBO, there's a Watchmen show the, coming to HBO. An action sequence with those characters should literally just be like a, a street fight. It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it should be. Yeah. It should be like, very. It should grounded. be like below what batman is mm-hmm. it shouldn't even be batman stuff mm-hmm. but like so uh the shitty thing that zach uh snyder said uh in the in this interview that i'm about yeah. to pull from he was like uh a lot of people when they read Watchmen, they told me like oh it's like philosophically so great mm-hmm. and uh when i watched it all i saw was sex okay like like it just felt sexy to me and i'm like all right dude thanks zach new Hot New, take. But one thing that uh, he said that, uh, about Watchmen that um, I really liked, he said something along – I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But like, along the lines of like, oh, I'm not going to make something that's better than um, the original mm-hmm. work. I'm going to – like if you ask me uh, if you should uh, read the original work or watch my movie, I'm going to say read the read original, the original work. work. Yeah. But this movie could aid – in like when you read that original work, you know you hear, you hear like all of these explosions. Yeah. You hear this music. Like you're able to see these characters mm-hmm. come alive. And there's there's just like I'm down for. And when you read in Rorschach's voice, and he's like, absolutely, all of these you vermin, definitely hear that. There's a yeah, scum for sure. boiling up, yeah. and they'll softly whisper, yeah. "No." Uh, but I, I like. My thing is like sometimes you see people scoff at like the people like so and so books being made into a movie and people are like oh, but I want like anything to be made into a visual medium, mm-hmm. into a movie or a TV show because mm-hmm. it's just it's just like the most it's the easiest way to connect with something mm-hmm. in terms of like when you see it mm-hmm. it just feels real yeah so that in that sense yeah Harry Potter is super enhanced by the movies even if the movies aren't as good as the books right I love the movies but they're not the books. But they are the books are, in turn enhanced. That's I've never thought about that. That's really interesting. Yeah, that's really cool. But there's a lot going on in the Fantastic Beast sequel that I'm super excited about, and I think even more so, down the line in these movies because we're gonna learn more about the characters that we don't know. We're gonna learn more about Newt. We're gonna learn more about Tina and her sister Queenie and mm. all these characters. And plus, on top of that, we're going to get to really dive into this Dumbledore stuff with Jude Law. Mm-hmm. With Jude Law, who's so good. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm so excited! I can't yeah. wait! I can't wait! All right, well let's let's move on from yeah. uh, from trailers and shit. Yeah, let's there's uh, sports stuff too. Oh yeah, let's and let's, talk, we, let's talk a little about some basketball. We, we like sports, like basketball. So, <laughs> All right. we're transition masters. <laughs> One episode in, and we're great at this. Um, so preseason started yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, we yeah. Wa- we watched. We we you were playing two K, but I had the Celtics Hornets game on, mm-hmm. and they fucking came back. Did yeah, they the end Hornets up came back. I th- yeah, I wasn't won. watching super close. I yeah, was literally I, like, well, I fell asleep. Looked I up. Nap. They were like uh, Celtics were up by like twenty. Yeah, they were. Well, and then I, think, I started playing I my game. Happened, looked back, and it was they were d- uh, down by like one. I think I what like, happened what? is basically like the Celtics starters won, and then like they just the, started the taking bench squad. That's fucking preseason. So that's gonna happen. Well, like at the end of the game, none of the Celtics starters were in. 
and the only Hornet starter was Michael Kidd Gilchrist. It's preseason. They looked fucking scary. The Celtics? They looked so terrifying. fucking scary. Terrifying. There's, they have so many dudes that are in there so versatile. They're going to be so fucking It's so scary. Good. That's why like, I really hope that Markel Fultz fucking makes a strong comeback this yeah. season. Yeah. That way that they, they like they so can to fucking... challenge them. Yeah. Well, wait a minute though, because today was the Raptors' first preseason game. Okay. And we didn't watch it, but I saw some Kawhi highlights, mm-hmm. and he's still Kawhi. He's, he's still, still Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard. The Raptors Kawhi. have a shot. They do. That's They're like... different. They're different than they've been. Like I would say, like it's it is Celtics, Raptors, Raptors Sixers. 70, yeah, 76ers. Okay. Can we can and then we, can Buck, we talk the about Bucks the elephant are, in the room, and his name is Jimmy G Buckets, because he gets buckets. Jimmy Butler. Yeah, where where the fuck is he going, dude? I've, I've, okay, I've heard. I have that such a weird feeling because about it. It went <sighs> from uh, the Heat, yeah. being in the lead as far and as now getting apparently him. the Rockets are like trying super hard to make something happen, but they need to like get the Kings involved to get a bad contract. I do out not of want him to go to the Rockets. No, me neither. Dude. No way. No like I, no, no. there's part of me that like that roots for the Rockets because you know like they can they maybe might, dethrone the, only the team Warriors. That can dethrone but the Warriors. I, I legit like the Warriors. I like, the Warriors. The Warriors. I I like, like watching the, them. I like the people on the team. Yeah, They're fun. I like the Warriors, and I like watching the Warriors play more than I like the Rockets playing. Uh, the Rockets are not fucking watching fun to James watch. Harden is like, while very impressive, mm-hmm. not enjoyable. I like watching James Harden when he when he is fantastic James Harden. Yeah. You know, when I you see him fucking the, the breaking game. people and taking yeah. step back jumpers and shit. You don't want to watch the games where he's shooting I see 18 him. free throws. Yeah, it's super just boring. He literally like game. like fucking backed his ass up and twerked on what's the, <laughs> in, in that it playoff Stanley game. Johnson? Oh, in the playoff game. In the, there was a playoff game last year that he literally remember. backed up into a dude that ran into Oh, him. it was Joe Ingles. Yeah, and then it was, was like, Joe he Ingles. Me. It was when they were playing the Jazz, and it was Joe Ingles, and he backed up into him would, would because you... Joe Ingles wasn't really paying attention. Yeah. And he had the ball, and he just like backed up. And they called a foul. It's like, when you see isn't there like, like that, an incidental contact thing? <sighs> like when you see shit like that, you're just like, that's stop. That's you're not, like you just that's say not stop. the spirit of the game. Yeah, that's not the spirit of the game. Yeah, and it, absolutely, it, it, it's it's annoying. But it. He is. It, it is. Like, so I can, okay. Well, is there a team in the West that Jimmy could go to besides the Lakers? That would Rockets, be. That, that would that be could challenge the, the Warriors. Warriors. Uh, Jazz? No, yeah, probably not. They'd be better. Well, but it would be. That would be. They would put them at the three, probably. Probably. If, because and like the what about the Blazers? The Blazers were the three seed last year. If they added Jimmy Butler. What does that do for them? That would be good. I, th- I think with that would be with the dynamic fucking... backcourt, it helps their defense. But it also a depends lot. on it depends on who the Blazers would be willing to That's give up. That's the problem. To. Is to um, get him. They'd probably have to give up CJ McCollum. They would have to. Yeah, they would have to. Be, yeah. So that hurts them. It's they're going to be like if if they're a, they might be a little better, but they're basically the same. And I, I would I would say especially with how the Timberwolves are being right now, as as stingy as Tibbs is being, What's like going on? I think that. Uh, they're going to want C.J. McCollum oh, yeah. so that they can have that point. Oh, uh, well, uh, they apparently asked for Ben Simmons from the Sixers. <laughs> what? Are you kidding me? What is they that They wouldn't nonsense? even give him up for Kawhi. Yeah, what are you thinking? No, I have no, yeah. I, <laughs> what is that shenanigans? No chance, dude. That's some nonsense, dude. <laughs> uh, give us Ben Simmons. No. The well, Sixers you know, were like, the uh, new I'll GM. Nice to you. New Let GM, me... uh, what, what's it, Elton Brand? Is that his name? Yeah. New GM Ellen Brand was like, "Oh, my first phone call as a as a as a GM, trade talk with this with about Jimmy. Hey, I'm I'm interested in Jimmy. We want Ben. Sim- no, oh, that was quick. That's how GMing works. This is easy. I just say no to people. <laughs> Why the fuck would they give? So, but like the big the big one like that because Jimmy was like, I want to play for the Clippers or the Nets or the Knicks. Those were like the three he said at first. Mm-hmm. And then he's, and then it came out. And it that came out that the heat, heat were like the heat were being, were being super, super aggressive. So, I am a Heat fan. I love the Miami Heat. Uh, I feel weird about it. Like I obviously I want Jimmy Butler, mm-hmm. but like, I'm like, give him to me for free. I'll give you Tyler Johnson for him. Like it's like I don't want to. I I. It's weird because like, you know, we're in cap hell or whatever people call it. But it's like I just love the team so much. The camaraderie of the yeah, team and, you and also, the passion of it is like. It's such a thing I buy into, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm like so against the the weird modern fan mentality of like if you're not going to beat the Warriors, you might as well just tank. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, come on, right? 
You don't like like yes, you play as every an Orlando season. Magic fan. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Be... How long have you guys been bad? It's not fun. Yeah, it's. it's I'm not... a Dolphins fan. Like we've been average my whole life. It's yeah. not fun. Like I I don't think that we've made the playoffs. Shout since... out Dolphins three and zero start. I don't think I we've made the playoffs Patriots. since Dwight Howard left. Dog. No, I don't think so. No. Yeah, but like the Heat, we're the, the have only missed the playoffs like one time since Dwight Howard left, mm-hmm. and it's like. You never want to do that. It sucks. You want to be in the dance. And Even against the Sixers last year, we lost, what, 4-1, or did we get swept? I don't remember. But it was a fun series. Mm-hmm. Sure, Whiteside played bad. He played really good defense on JoJo, but mm-hmm. on offense, he was garbage. Mm-hmm. But, like, watching Justice Winslow, like, blossom and be super aggressive, and mm-hmm. like, it was awesome. And, like, I, like, I love the, the guys on the young core so much that I'm, I'm going to be sad if they're gone. Mm-hmm. I understand the basketball move of being, like, you know, who do you think? Maybe you give up Tyler Johnson and a Justice Winslow in a future first round pick, and maybe that gets you Jimmy Butler. Maybe you might have to give up more, but I'm going to be sad if it happens. That I would say, like, if I were Tibbs, that I would want Goran Dragic. It's weird. I would say that's so the first piece I would ask for. I would apparently, say they wanted point jo- Josh Richardson, and the Heat drew the line. They said, You can't have him. Really? Yeah, the Heat drew the line. They said, No Josh Richardson. No Josh Richardson. Now, I've said this to you but before. Any- Hmm? But like anyone else is on the table. No, no, no. I think they just Josh? were like th- they said we'll do it for Josh, Josh Richardson and probably picks. And or they something. denied it. A contract and picks or something. Yeah. Huh. But like, how old is Josh Richardson? Twenty five. I want to say. So, so he's young. He's young. Twenty six maybe. But Jimmy Butler is only all, also only. Jimmy Butler's thirty. Holy shit! I thought yeah, he was a lot Jimmy, younger. I thought he was like twenty eight. That's why I would be sad because Jimmy Butler's already thirty. But at the same time, Jimmy Butler fits the Heat so well. Mm-hmm. He fits the culture of the Heat so well, and he's the thing we need. We are a superstar away from being able to, at the very least, you know, push the contenders in the East. Right. Especially with LeBron gone. Mm-hmm. Like, we always play everyone tough. And their culture also fits with Jimmy Butler. What Jimmy so Butler well. is and wants to be. Yeah. yeah. Like, and like, he'd be the top dog, which seems like it's what he wants. Yeah. It seems like his thing is that he wants to be the top The dude. best player, like, on a team. That's competing. Yeah. And also all of these, he wants a, uh, a hard work ethic. I wonder team. if he's, like, more interested in being competitive over being a contender. Because there's a difference. The Heat are competitive, but they're not a contender. Right. Like they would, the Wolves are like they were supposed to be contenders. supposed to be competitive at the least with with that trio. But yeah. obviously, there's you know Andrew Wiggins has been really underwhelming, mm-hmm. and Cat doesn't play defense. You know, and they start Taj Gibson at the four, which is like Tibbs. It's 2018 going on 19. You need to catch up. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And Jeff Teague's their starting point guard. Do so. you think? Do you think uh, Tibbs is going to get fired? So he's not the GM anymore, right? No. I don't think he's the president of basketball operations anymore or whatever. I think they got someone else to do that part. So it's possible. Mm-hmm. Like, he can't – if he makes a horrible deal for Jimmy Butler and it, like, tanks their their hopes, maybe. But at the same time, does he deserve to get fired for – what you could argue are several affronts. You know the, the the seemingly not embracing the modern style of play. Right. The running of your starters into the ground. Right. Thirty eight minutes a game or whatever for guys like Andrew Wiggins. Yeah. The misuse of Carl Anthony Towns. Uh-huh. There's games where he has five shots. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what? How does that happen? Right. And like, obviously Tibbs is is a has his strengths, especially on. The, I saw a really uh, a tweet. I think it was a tweet. It might have been on. I don't remember where it was. Somebody was like, can Tibbs trade himself in the Jimmy Butler deal? Can he go with him to Houston and be there? I I don't don't remember. It might have been on Reddit. They were like, can he he become Houston's (laughs) defensive coordinator, basically? Because their dude that, like, built their new defense just retired. So can he go take that job? Can he go with Jimmy? It's, like, super funny. But, like, it's so late now to fire him. Like, what uh, uh, what are you going to do to fire him now? What do you mean? You, then you just have to promote someone to be an interim head coach. Oh, you're saying like uh, it's too late, like it, it's too far, like at the very too least, close to the yeah, beginning of the season. At, at this point, just like all you can do is be like, well, you know, get the best you can for Jimmy. You don't have a lot of leverage anymore because Jimmy said he's going to hold out until you trade him. And on top of that, like do the best you can with what you get back. And depending on the outcome, we mm-hmm. may or may not fire you. Right. If, if Andrew Wiggins continues to show not only – anti-growth but regression mm-hmm. to being just like a, a, a an inefficient gunner mm-hmm. and if cat you know especially under a defensive-minded coach doesn't play defense yeah 
Andrew Wiggins also doesn't play defense despite his physical profile to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is with them not playing defense, but especially under Tibbs. Do, but, do, like, they might need a different type. Of, they might need someone who's, like, more like Steve Kerr. Someone who's more, you know, like a player's coach. Than, but not that, like, Tibbs – like, Tibbs' dudes seem to love him. You know what I mean? The, like, the older guys. Though. Yeah, like, like Jimmy Butler, I think, likes Tibbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taj Gibson obviously likes Tibbs. Lou Aldang just showed up for the Timber Bowls reunion. He obviously likes Tibbs. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'm, I'm not sure that he's not, like, he doesn't get along with players, but he's not, like, Steve Kerr's a different animal. Steve Kerr is, like, your buddy. Like, he's so... He approaches he's, it in a He's so way, encouraging. Yeah. Like, it's... And he, like, he like you, you can tell that he just believes in his guys so much. Yeah. And, like, you might argue, like, look at his roster. He's not that good. At, but he changed them dynamically from when Mark Jackson was their coach. And he, he changed the offense. He made them more explosive. Mm-hmm. And he just really believes in his dudes. And I really admire that. I, I, like, you hear, like, the, co- the, you know, when they're mic'd up, and you hear bits of him, like, being just so encouraging. Like, when guys are slumping, he's like, you just keep shooting. I know you're going to make them. And I really admire that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, don't I, think, I fucking really I like assume, you, based on his demeanor, that Tom Thibodeau is not like that. No. <laughs> he no. seems very angry all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, but like, long story short, I really hope that Jimmy goes to Miami. I hope, I hope he does. It'd be cool. It'd be fun. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting. I just depends on what we have. Out to of lose. all of the teams that he could go to, like I find that the coolest. Oh, I think it's definitely it fits the best. I think mm-hmm. the only type, at of, least the teams that he like, yeah, that wants he to go to could end up like because I would, would probably, like, like he probably love being on the Jazz. They have a similar mentality. They play really hard. Yeah, the Pacers are kind of similar. But it's like, you know, they're up a bit higher on the rung than the Heat are right now. Mm-hmm. And he helps the Heat the most. Mm-hmm. Now, like, a team like, you know, the Clippers, he could help equally, I think. Mm-hmm. But they'd probably have to lose Tobias Harris to get the trade done. And that, that's like, okay, now you're just a bunch of dudes with Jimmy Butler. Yeah. You're, but you're a you bunch also, of point guards and Jimmy Butler. But also, how much do the, the Clippers know as far as, like, oh, like, we're getting Kawhi next year? Oh, that's true. But because then that's if you the could other get Jimmy and Kawhi. That, well, that's yeah. what I'm, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So like, or, w- what or all don't we? Know? How much do the Knicks think they're going to get Kyrie next year, and they mm-hmm. think they can make a big three of Jimmy, Kyrie, and Kristaps, mm-hmm. which would be scary. Mm-hmm. But you see the stuff that Kyrie said, you know, a few days ago about He's staying in Boston. how it'd be effing crazy to leave mm-hmm. was what, whatever his quote was. Shimmy Hendrix, dude. Shimmy Hendrix, great new nickname. <laughs> Shout out whoever that Reddit <laughs> user was. Great Shimmy nickname. Hendrix. I'm gonna use that. I love it. That's very good. Way better than, uh, what was the other one? Kung Fu Kyrie. That's, That's not bad. It's fine. He's got a little saw, alliteration. I saw um, people want to refer to that. Some some sports writer referred to their lineup of Kyrie, Jalen Brown, Gordon Hayward, Jason Tatum, Al Horford as the poison lineup. And I was like, that's kind of boring. Poison? Yeah. Zach, Lowe, Zach Lowe was like, we can do better. <laughs> <laughs> It's the just like poison lineup? I mean, because like you've got the death lineup on the Warriors or whatever, so it's like the which poison which lineup. which is way better than the, the death lineup is way better than well, the Hamptons wait, well, Five. The, the Hamptons Five is so bougie. It's just it's, it's just like I want to call them the Hampton Five. Yeah, not okay. the Hamptons Five. I, 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 I don't like that's the, semantics. I, like the I think you can do either. I don't think it's a big deal. But I, like, I, I, the death I don't lineup like is an awesome either name. of them. I don't like either of them more than the. The death problem lineup. is that the death lineup has Harrison Barnes on it. They had to heck have a new name for having Kevin Durant. I say fuck lineup. it, adapt it. <laughs> you don't need Harrison I Barnes. Agree. I still use the death lineup. I think it's awesome, and also <clears> it's like super. Serious. What's like the Lakers' name going to be when they have LeBron playing the five? They need a name for that lineup. Mm. I don't know what it is exactly off the top of my mm. head, but it's like Lonzo, Le Five, KCP, <laughs> Brandon Ingram, Kuzma, LeBron, probably something like that. Le Five. Honestly, that's what, what do you think about the Lakers' offseason moves? I think they're weird. So. Obviously, you get LeBron, you win. That's an instant win. You're yeah. way better than you've been mm-hmm. since Kobe was in his prime or right. late prime or whatever. Congratulations. Like You, you might be contenders yeah. in the West. LeBron might. might force you to make the finals against your own will. Right. Um, and I think that the thing they have going for them is that their young core is very promising and that they didn't have to give anything up to get LeBron. Mm-hmm. On top of that, who knows who joins them next year. I, I, next year is super offseason. So many free agents. AD might go there. KD might go there. Who knows mm-hmm. who ends up as a Laker next season because mm-hmm. they're going to have a max spot open. On top of that, 
I think like the one year deals and the veterans they signed is what's weird. They sound like Rondo and Lance Stevenson. <laughs> JaVale McGee. Ja- JaVale they McGee, who's they like their an only team. center. They made the meme team. They made the meme team. That's yeah. it is. It's the mm-hmm. meme team. Yeah. And they can have like a whole if they go and get Swaggy P, they can have a whole lineup that fills out the <laughs> meme lineup. That's what it would be. The meme lineup. And I mean, I'm interested to see what happens. I think that having LeBron and Rondo on the court at the same time is fascinating just because yeah. of their brains. Oh yeah. They're both geniuses. Yeah. Basketball geniuses specifically. Do you think that like them picking up those specific people are going to hurt their uh, their younger talent? Uh, only only Ingram, if Kuzma, they only ball. if they don't give the young guys run. If the young guys are getting minutes, they're going to be fine. Yeah. And I think for the most part they're going to start the young guys. I mean, they're starting Rondo at the beginning of the year because of Lonzo's injury or whatever. But like the clickbait thing is like Rondo's starting over Lonzo. No, when Lonzo's healthy and they feel good, Lonzo's going to start. You think so? Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, at the very least, they'll start him it, at the two. I don't two. think it's in. They might four. just do a Rondo Lonzo backcourt instead of a Lonzo KCP backcourt. That'd be interesting. I mean, Lonzo can shoot. He can. He's capable. He, of it is. Well, it is like he shoots weird, but yeah, he can do it. People don't respect Lonzo's talent enough. Well, I mean, it's because of his dad. It's because of his dad, and it's yeah. because of of how he looks on the court. He, like, because he's of his goofy. Well, he's goofy. He like has he, a weird shooting he always motion. Likes, <laughs> it seems like this with sunken. Oh, jeez. He. I mean, it's mostly his uh, shooting he, motion. He, he, he's, yeah, he's his shooting weird. motion looks awful. Yeah. Um, but that dude is fucking hella talented, and apparently he's a lot like Rondo as far as his brain. His brain. Well, he's, he's and his passing. His passing was the biggest thing coming out. That was his yeah, biggest strength. He's, he passes really he's, well, and he's vision. He has a fucking really high basketball, basketball IQ. IQ. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think that whole group together is gonna be super interesting. I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, That's why know, I think it's I gonna don't know be how great. Brandon Ingram's gonna mesh with LeBron. It's, they have a lot of guys who want the ball. That's why I think it's a really positive thing for uh, Rondo um, to come onto the team. And help and, Rondo. Yeah, and, yeah, I think that's a great yeah. uh, mentor 2K style, Rondo. assign a mentor. Exactly, <laughs> assign a mentor, and yeah. Rondo's going to learn but a lot from him. He, he's not going to help him with shooting. That's the one thing. <laughs> I, just, I just hope to God that Kuzma doesn't learn anything from JaVale McGee. <laughs> I mean, maybe like learn some cool dunks. <laughs> maybe learn, don't learn, learn hairstyles. <laughs> don't learn Shaq in a few moments. Um, but learn YouTube videos. He's pretty funny. He's some YouTube like stuff. He, he is a character. character. He's a character. For he's sure. a character. He's like their only center though. The, yeah, the Zubats is like their only other center. No, they got Mo Wagner, dude. Did they draft him. Is he a center? Yeah, he's a center. He's he's pretty. Solid. I feel he's like one of those tweener centers though. It's like a six ten. You know, is he that I'm short? A, I'm not really sure. I'm That's making what, it up. I don't know anything. He can about shoot. Him. This is what I imagine. He can, he can shoot. shoot. But how good is he right now? Is the question. I know he balled out during summer. How league, much can but, can that dude play defense against real NBA players? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know anything about it. I don't know. But in terms of like rotational centers, it's basically JaVale McGee, and then they're they're gonna have LeBron play the five, mm-hmm. and it's gonna be crazy. Mm-hmm. Point center. And I think point center for sure. Point, point center. center. Yeah, for sure. And I think like. In the long run, it's going to help LeBron's career. I think he's going to be able to play longer doing that. He's going to be less ball dominant on this team. There's so many people that can, unlike the Cavs were, there's so many people that can create right. and initiate offense on this team. Well, yeah, the one thing that they do have is like playmakers. Playmakers, yeah, mm-hmm. they're everywhere. And I, I, one thing LeBron said about the, the, the way the team was being built is he was like, we're getting basketball players. We're getting dudes who want to go out there and compete right. and play basketball. They're, right. they're like, you know, one thing that you could kind of see from the Cavs last year is that half of them were shook. Mm-hmm. Half of them were like, you know, playing their best, trying their best, and half mm-hmm. of them couldn't handle the spotlight of being on LeBron's team. Yeah, like you can say a lot of things about Lance Stevenson, but the one thing you <laughs> definitely can say about him is that he's fucking aggressive. Yeah, he's super that dude, aggressive. Yeah, that dude is. If you're aggressive. willing to blow in LeBron's ear, you're <laughs> aggressive. Like, if you want to come at the king. And not keep the, coming at the king not no matter what's happening. Sense. In a literal yeah. sense, blow in his ear. Oh, yeah, he literally blew in his ear. <laughs> um, so weird. But yeah, the, the Lakers are interesting at the very least. I don't know. I mean, I've seen people that are like, they're not even going to make the playoffs. The West is that deep. And I'm like, shut up. That's, they I have LeBron that, James. That's, that's a little You ridiculous. think that he went to the finals eight straight years for an accident? Mm-hmm. He dragged Cavs teams into the playoffs mm-hmm. and threw them to the finals mm-hmm. by himself. Mm-hmm. Like when Kevin Love couldn't hit a shot after Kyrie left, right. he was still like, "We're gonna make it. Here mm-hmm. we go. Yeah. I don't care. We're going." And he might do it again. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. 
because I think by the you know by the time the playoffs come, there's gonna be a lot of growth on that team, just like any squad with young talent. They're a different team than they are today than they will become June. One thing that I got annoyed with uh, last year about the whole Lakers narrative, mm-hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> because people like were saying that Zoe was a bust from the get. Yeah, it's that's you hot know? take nonsense. Yeah, because he, he was shooting worse. He, should, he shot poorly at the beginning. He, sh- of the he shot poorly at the beginning yeah. of the, the season, and I was like, just just but like, wait. You know, he's still some time. He's still good for seven or eight assists a game. Mm-hmm. He's still a solid on ball defender. Uh, yeah, like like. The, the, he that brings you other positives. He can average his three points. He is very easily like someone who can average a triple double for you. Yeah, and if that is a bad point guard to and have, then go. Fuck that's yourself. like a weird thing of the modern NBA. Like Russell Westbrook, like brought back this weird triple double being a thing. It's like it's, yeah. you're a triple double person. Yeah, that it, and I, I think part of it is like this new strategy of like instead of letting your center get all the rebounds. Have your center box people out, and mm-hmm. then your guards get them, or your, mm-hmm. or your wings and they can them, run the break, and yeah. they run the break, and that's mm-hmm. like a thing the Thunder do. They're like mm-hmm. Stephen Adams, box out everybody, mm-hmm. box out four dudes at once, so Russell can get the rebound and go. Right, because it's just it's just a you know it's that it's that two seconds. But the, it means the, but a lot. the one thing that annoyed me about the narrative last year uh, with the Lakers, where people were trying to say like like uh, Lonzo's not even the best rookie on his own team, Kuzma? which Kuzma. Is was a, great. He fucking yeah, had awesome. a coming out. He came party. out of nowhere, and yeah, came out of nowhere. But that, but it wasn't because like Lonzo. Lonzo played bad in the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. but Kuzma blew up quick. Ku, Kuzma yeah. played. He was so dropping well. like thirty point games. The, yeah, yeah, the only like so it's only a good thing for the Lakers is the fact yeah. that they have this four that just fucking. Well, guess also, what? He's like, I want to meet the I want to meet the one dude that's gonna tell me Josh Hart is better than Lonzo because I want to slap him. <laughs> But was you Josh, know someone thinks but that. Was Josh Hart a rookie last year? I think so, yeah. He's like one of those old rookies out of the G League, I think. I'm oh, really? Sure. I okay, think, all right. I'm, I think. I'm not positive. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, like the Heat are wont to have, you know, 26-year-old rookies because mm-hmm. they've been in the G League. Like guys mm-hmm. like Rodney Magruder mm-hmm. who bring you like one or two things that they're really good at. But, mm-hmm. you know, outside of that, they're you know, Rodney's a great on-ball defender. Mm-hmm. He's capable of shooting threes. And other than that, you know, that's why he's a rotation guy. But I love him, scavenger baby. Mm-hmm. Love the Heat Squad. Do you have a Do you have a, a Magic preview at all? Any Mo Bamba love you want to throw around? Uh, hope no, for I, Jonathan Isaac. I, I don't. I'm not gonna have a whole a lot of. Hope. I had a lot of hope last year. <laughs> and the for hot start reason. made it even worse because they were Warriors East dog. They were yeah, at the they were shooting the really well. There was a lot of fucking passing. Like how the sex the sexers. The sex. The seventy sexers. <laughs> that's how. That's how fucking that's how hot their them. offense was at the end of the, the season, dude. Uh, it was so sexy, and that's how. Yeah. That's how the Magic were playing. Well, at the and beginning it's like people were like, "Wait, you let Vucevic shoot threes now?" <clears throat> and it's like, okay, but people. But, but it wasn't it. just Vucci. Fucking Aaron Gordon. Oh, yeah, everybody. Fournier, everybody was shooting my, okay, really well. Here's my Magic thing. Uh huh. Let Aaron Gordon do more. I would let say that let, dude let play point guard. Play more like, aggressive. Let let him attack. Yeah. Let him play point forward. Yeah. Shoot. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. Like, do just let him loose. Yeah. He's the dude. Yeah, you he, paid him. He's now the dude. Uh-huh. There's no other excuse. And now, like, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see how Jonathan Isaac develops, what mm-hmm. he can become beyond a really mm-hmm. good defender. Um, Mo Bamba is very interesting of what he can become. Also um, very good I'm defender. very interested in, uh, in, in what their intentions are for this because I don't think it's anything more than a development game. Oh, no. De- they're tanking. They're a tanking. I mean, they might be tanking in the sense that, like, the Lakers were last year where mm-hmm. they were, like, we're tanking, but we're going to have, like, 35 wins. Yeah. Maybe. I think I would... I would say I would venture to say that that would be what it, like closer to what they're going to be than the worst team. In yeah, the, in, they're not going to have you know, twenty five or they had last year wins no, like no. last year. They'll be better. If uh, I put my should, money on it, they're going to uh, have more wins. They should than let the Jonathan kids. Simmons start at point guard. Jonathan Simmons, yeah, they I don't should. Know what they're? I just I think that they have DJ Augustine and is he still there? Hmm? He's mm-hmm. the only one left from their dumpster of. They still have guards. yeah. They still have DJ. Aug- they have a shit ton of point guards this year too, which, which is, is it would it'd be weird well, to make of all of these. Good? All of them are very mid. below average. They're, 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 <laughs> they're DJ Augustine very is average. Like a, they're not at best a backup point guard, mm-hmm. but he's your starting point guard. Yeah. But let's be real. The the length and athleticism that Jonathan Simmons would bring would be just it, interesting. I don't think that they're going to uh, start Jonathan Simmons at point guard because they made all these moves to get other point guards, and you also have Augustine. So like they this offseason they picked mm-hmm. up Isaiah Briscoe, they picked up Jaron Grant. Like, oh, I forgot about Jaron Grant. Yeah, yeah. so isn't they Jaren have Grant like trash. I, I wouldn't say he's trash. I, I don't know. I don't know. He is middling. You know, he's he middling. Is, yeah, like. 
He's just not and very maybe, good. But maybe you you know you throw darts and see what <coughs> sticks. True. Maybe in the right line. Because Isaiah Grant. Briscoe looked really fucking good. in summer league. Oh, dude, he looks gotta, so fucking good. Dude, when he watched him, you and gotta what, be careful with summer league, dude. I understand. I, understand. <laughs> I, I get. I, I go you get over a the little top. excited. And this is the first time I've ever watched summer league. Yeah. Too. So like, it, no, I, get, dude, I, I I'll admit, I got a little league. bit of summer league bugs, buzz when I watched the Heat, and I saw Bam. Running point guard, and yeah. it like I was like, it's "Oh my super, god, super <laughs> what?" <laughs> it's super exciting. Um, but he did look really good, and I was like, "I really hope that they pick up this Isaiah Briscoe dude." Mm-hmm. Um, and they did. Yeah, they, they did. Uh, yeah, they picked him up. Fucking Jonathan Isaac looked look really good in the summer league. Um, yep. Yeah, so like I'm, I'm not expecting too. They've much. got dudes. I don't, I don't they've think, got guys with potential. But but what they need to do is stop magicking every year and they, either losing them. Or just like fluttering with everyone, like you know, they either lose their talent, like they don't develop Depot. their talent really well, and yeah. they also they also don't, don't have a history. I think this is the third straight year where we've had the number sixth overall pick. Ugh, you're not tanking good enough. The you're numbers, bad at tanking. Yeah, exactly. You like, can't even we're tank never. Right. We're never like Ugh. like I don't know if we would have drafted Luka Doncic this year, but if that would have been enough, kind of that would like if you would have given been, the Magic the number one pick, would they have taken Luka Doncic? I don't know. Because we, we like, I don't know. Luca we, went we, two, right? Luca, no, because uh, Marvin Bagley went two. Luca went three because they did the weird trade thing. Yeah, where they, he got picked third because but the team who picked fifth got him. But also, the like the uh, Bagley was also the only person that came out and was like, "Yeah, I would be fine with the Kings drafting." Him. <laughs> so the Kings were like, DeAndre Ayton was like, "No." I'm not into it. <laughs> Vlade was like, "Like, we'll, we'll right, take that come on guy, down. I, I mean, he's supposed to be really good, though. And I mean, who? Yeah. We'll see what happens. I saw a thing on Bleach Report that was like, Willie Colley Stein's ready to get paid. And I was like, buy another team next year. Not that much money. I don't, I don't know about <laughs> Willie Stein. That's no. what everyone's looking for is a center who can't shoot. A guy who's like a pick and roll guy. Yeah. The market's not hot. The market's him. not hot, dog. Your skill set doesn't match. Yeah. Um, but the, the the thing that sort of annoys me and sort of I wouldn't say annoys me like it's I, I find kind of confusing like even if we do tank there's it's not like what there is you know like a Ben Simmons coming out next year yeah. that like like or like, there's like the two a, dookies. a really good there's the two dookies uh, three dookies, three dookies do not do yeah. not forget yeah there's but there's the dookies and we'll see you know what I mean you got uh, so you got Z- so the the yeah. three dookies are Zion Williamson R J Barrett Dunk boy, <laughs> this is more than just a dunk boy. But dude. they're dunk boys. He's, he's he's a fucking like, Zion is dunk boy. He's, Zion is absolutely he's been dunk like boy. a famous dunk boy since he was in like middle school, because he was like this chunky kid dunking from mm-hmm. like the free throw line. Yeah, and he's a freak. Making yeah, making and he looks a lot more impressive from what I've seen of him as far as like dribbling and yeah, shooting. Yeah. I'm super interested to see like what happens to his body with a year in a college system with with you know the access to the is facilities he gonna is he gonna and, thin out? Is he gonna yeah, he, and he's also so weird because he's only six foot seven. You yeah, think he's a tweener. The way that he plays like Jordan, is so much bigger. He's like a Jordan Bell kind of high flying tweener. But even I don't, Jordan Bell's not as he's athletic like, as as Zion. I mean, Jordan Bell's athletic. He's not as athletic. But, as Zion. I'm, but who is like he's a freak? Yeah, and I I think that he is. But what, like we were talking the other day, like. I haven't could, seen Jordan he, Bell take outside shots like Zion has. Yeah, but I think his we were talking about it like could too. could Zion become like a Draymond Green? Mm-hmm. Could that happen? I could see that happening. It'd for be sure. so interesting. But he's also shorter than Draymond, so yeah. like he. But what's but what's his length? Very important. What's yeah, that? I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what his length. That's very like. important. Um, but yeah, like so, there's no like super high quality as as far as I know. There's no, there's no, no super high quality point guards no, that are going to come there's out. There's no in bust this for luck. There's, you know, there's no tank. That's a football reference. Well, I would say R.J. Barrett is. R.J. RJ and Zion are very good fucking prospects. You're, you're, you're someone you're going to tank. I, I would say especially R.J. Mm-hmm. Like, that is a He's a more well-rounded, fucking, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the, um, specifically for the Magic, the one thing that they need point is a point guard. They need and a playmaker. Who's out there? And there's nobody like in two years. This there's a dude that's coming out that's like six foot five, really good playmaker, Ooh. really good. Shooter, you know how John Hammond feels about long boys. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Which is another reason why I don't get why he doesn't just be like, hey, start Jonathan Simmons at point guard because he's long. Just get the length out there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I, I. I. That's another thing. I don't know what their intention. If you were given the what keys to the Orlando Magic to today, would you trade away Nikola Vucevic? Yes. And Evan Fournier. 
Ooh, I don't know about full nude. But Gucci immediately, right? When I you go, I'm I'm in full Mo Bamba mode. It's Mo Bamba time. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, giving him the keys to the center position. Yeah, I'm I, gonna let that boy make his mistakes and develop. I would, if the Bucks were interested in giving Ooh. me Malcolm Brogdon, Ooh. I would I would want That'd to make good. that move. That'd be I would good. want to make that move. He's he's young. Yeah. He's a good combo guy. What if you could hit up the Clippers? They've got he's, like three point guards. True. They've got Patrick Beverly, Milos, and Shea. Shy Gil just Alexander. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you could get him, I doubt that they would they be able to. They wouldn't give him up, but they might give up Milos or. But Milos or is also Beverly. pretty old, right? Yeah, they both are. But I mean, I'm just <laughs> talking about to be comp- if you want to be more competitive. Mm-hmm. I w- yeah, I would. But Brogdon's, I mean, he's like 25 or something like that. He right. was an old rookie, but right, he's still young. Yeah, he fits the timeline a bit more. Yeah. Plus, like he seems like he's on the outs there, not because he doesn't want to be there or because they don't like him, but he just always seems to be rumored in the trade packages that, yeah. that, that are thrown in the air for them. Yeah. Because he's just like, you know, he's a good piece. He's a good piece to have. Um, But yeah, I, Fournier, I'm, I'm less hesitant to give away now hesitant. that... Oh, less now. You're more hesitant than Vucci. Okay, I don't want to give away Fournier yeah. when I found out that he was six foot seven. Oh yeah, you found out how tall he was. <laughs> no, no, tall he was. And I was like, I was like, oh shit, dude. Yeah, but how old he's is he? He's fucking tall. He's not that old. Uh, he's twenty eight at the least, I would guess. I don't know if it, I'm not. I might be wrong. I think he's like twenty six. Listen, as a person with a bad hairline, I can speak on this. <laughs> so, <laughs> how old are you? I'm twenty five. <laughs> so he's at least twenty five. <laughs> so he has to be older than you. He has more hair than. Listen, you, it makes me feel. Actually, it'd make me feel better if he was my age, I guess. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know. All I, see, I see Kelly Olenek, and I'm just like, can I have some of that? You have too much. Can I have some? Yeah. He's got. It, does he still – is he rocking like a man bun? He changes it up. Sometimes he does the man bun. Sometimes he puts the hairband in. I watched, he plays better with the man bun. I will I will, I will, I will. P- throw down for that. He plays best with the man bun. Really? He plays worse when he's got the headband in. Huh. Yeah. Is there any like, like what are you most excited for in the NBA this year? Markel Fultz. Markel Fultz specifically. Markel Fultz. I am most excited. I don't know. I, I watched every single Heat game last year. I'm gonna watch as many Heat games as I can again this year. I watch more Heat games than I do like the rest of basketball, right. but I also watch a lot of other basketball. I think maybe I'm really interested to see how LeBron, the LeBron thing works. I f- yeah, I find that I'm fascinating. I'm interested to see. Can the Warriors repeat it? I mean, obviously everyone thinks it's a given, mm-hmm. but they're getting older every year. They, they got brought to a game seven with, last year with the Rockets, and yeah. the, the, and if the Rockets, a has Chris, Chris Paul, hurt. or if they didn't have a total fucking meltdown, yeah, th- then they, they would have missed twenty seven threes in a row. If they would have shot, literally made like two of those threes. If they would have shot bad in that series, and they would have bi- won, and, and not and, abysmal. And, yeah, and not holy yeah. shit, garbage, yeah. zombified. What the fuckness they got that shook. happened in that it, game it, seven? It's a, it's, a, it's a narrative with James Harden and Chris Paul. Sad, like Chris Paul's never been to a final. That's the farthest Chris Paul's ever gone in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. There's a narrative to both of them that they don't do it and when you need it done. What, well, and what's sad about that series specifically is because like well, before Chris Paul got hurt, he was playing amazing, he was playing dude. So good. His game six was he fucking was phenomenal. So well. He was playing really well. In Andre Iguodala's terms, if he was healthy, they would have beat the Rockets 4-1. to one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because I, I, when I first heard that, I kind of scoffed when they were like, the Warriors are in trouble because of Andre Godala's health. And I was like, come on. They have, oh, really? They have oh, they're in trouble. Five all stars or whatever outside of but he's four all stars. He's so but he's fucking really important. important to their rotation. Yeah, he's really important. He's like the, the cog to that lineup. Mm-hmm. He makes that lineup tick. Because mm-hmm. when he's not out there, they have like Patrick McCaw or like. You know, Sean Livingston or somebody like that playing that role, and it's not as good. Mm-hmm. No one's as versatile as him. Yeah, I, I, even though he's too like many people. Now or too whatever. many people sleep on, on Andre, Andre Iguodala. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. Iggy has, Pop. Mm-hmm. That's fucking Finals MVP, he, right? Finals MVP. Or finals MVP. That first finals and he was also won. a fucking star when he played for Philly. Dude. Oh yeah, yeah. He was um, amazing. Uh, I don't know. There's, I mean, I think the West is. Good. I, I, I. The answer is I don't have a thing I'm most looking forward to, I guess. There's a lot of There's things. a lot of things. There's you know, things. how's the West going to shake up? Who's going to run the East now? I mm-hmm. can't. Is Michael Porter Jr. going to play? Is Michael, is That's a big one. even going to play? Mm-hmm. Because and if he does play, if is he, he going to play, play watch out for the Nuggets, dude. Mm-hmm. They're scary. Mm-hmm. They're scary. Because they didn't make the – they were like one game away were, from making the playoffs. I think one game out of the playoffs, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, who'd they get? 
sleeper sleeper signing. Isaiah uh, Thomas. They got Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. What if Isaiah Thomas goes back to you know the last year in Boston? Mm-hmm. What if he's actually healthy? Mm-hmm. Isaiah Thomas coming off, off of the, the bench, bench, that fucking scoring. Dude? Yeah. <laughs> now I will say the Nuggets might have the worst defense of all time. Yeah. In the history of basketball. Yeah. That defense is going to be stinky. Yeah. But they might win a lot of games, one thirty-five to one thirty-two, because mm-hmm. they're going to score a lot of points. Yeah. I don't know. They're very interesting. They're, they're interesting to watch. I, I like Michael Porter Jr. a lot, uh, but like, th- there's a lot of things to be interesting about. But for sure, the like the number one thing that I'm looking forward Markel to Fultz. is the Markel comeback. Fultz, as comeback well as season. as well as like the parallel of. Can like, you come back from what somewhere is you've seven... never been? What do you mean? Because like he was obviously the number one pick, and there was all this hype. Right. But he's like never been great in the NBA. Right. Because he, he wasn't he wasn't healthy. He got Sixer syndrome. You know, you're not going to be healthy your first season. It's just it's the way it works. There's some there's something in the water over there. I, 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 but I, I'm in love with that story, man. I, I, oh, it's I love, amazing. I love. I'm in like, love with the, the person the, that's dude, on top. As much as I hate he tanking, has, I love the process. Yeah. I embrace the process. Mm-hmm. It's like I think it's fascinating. Mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting, and I love the dudes on. I love Ben Simmons. I love Joel Embiid. Joel, I love the personality of Joel. I like JJ Redick. A lot of people hate JJ Redick because he's like a dookie, and they think he's Fucking, like that stereotypical like Duke douche. But he's a super interesting, intelligent dude. Yeah, I like JJ a lot. Yeah, I like JJ a lot. Um, he's coming off the bench to start the mm-hmm. year. Yeah, they're gonna start Markel. Markel, Holtz. hell yeah, dude. Woo, fuck yes, dude. Woo. I get so like so. I listen Woo. to I listen to the the podcast with uh, Elton Brand and uh, Zach Lowe. Uh-huh. At least a, a, a lot of it, mm-hmm. where he started talking about Markel, and Elton's, shout out the low post. Uh, Elton's like immediate like Zach Lowe asked him like, oh, is uh, Markel Fultz shooting threes uh when you guys go five on five and stuff and like elton was just like immediately like oh yeah no oh, he's yeah. shooting yo he hit that, the, the, he hit that pull-up jumper in yeah. the game yesterday the, the way that oh, he immediately mentioned that ben simmons play yet it was in, yeah it was incredible he threw it, it off incredible. the backboard as if there's doing so many things to like about the sixers and then he just touch pass to markel for an easy but that dude's vision and creativity is so insane he is the w- probably one of the most creative dudes i've Combined ever seen with his size and skill set it's nuts mm-hmm. he's lebron-esque out there like mm-hmm. some of the stuff he does is lebron-esque uh, uh, yeah and but he's all he's super fun to watch um, oh yeah the but he's also is. so the 76ers I, I mentioned that i don't like watching the rockets play right yeah, they're the, the opposite. 76ers are they're the, the opposite. opposite yeah like there's a lot of movement there's yeah. a lot of and it's I very think, pretty basketball it's like the warriors play very pretty it's like a dance when you watch the Warriors mm-hmm. play. It's yeah. just all the stuff going on. Yeah, and, and 76ers are, a lot, are very Warriors-esque. Yeah. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of like off-ball movement they don't have and stuff. The, and, well, and it's also like it's a, it's a the, the, the Warriors aren't three-point gunners the way people think they are. Mm-hmm. They're like middling in terms of takes and average. Right. It's more Steph and Clay and KD that, the, that just make them just so good about them. Yeah. At, so like, you know, you might think of Sixers and think, oh, they don't have the sh-, you know, Ben Simmons can't shoot. But they are the kings of off-ball movement. Yeah, the Warriors are. Oh, yeah, the Warriors. Yeah, yeah. specifically yeah. Steph and Clay. They're mm-hmm. like gods at it. It's mm-hmm. crazy. The, the 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 amount of running. And I meant do. Kings, like not like the, they are the Sacramento the, Kings. No, you don't want to be that. They are the best in the you league. You don't want to be that. Yeah, <laughs> they're not. Yeah, the... that's one thing I really admire about the Heat is they they try to implement a lot. You know, they're very adaptive to the trends of the league and what mm-hmm. works. And mm-hmm. even if we don't have you know the best personnel, mm-hmm. we have. Eric Spolstra, who is, in my opinion, at the very least a top five coach in the league, implementing what works and also staying on top of the culture of the, you know, the defensive mentality, the toughness culture of the Heat. And I think, and, and, you know, if we can land someone, I think next year is the big year when there's so many guys. Like the odds of Pat Riley not being able to get one of these dudes to want to live in South Beach and not pay uh, taxes. I think if, like, <laughs> if, uh, in out of all. All of the the people that I would be really interested to see go to the Lakers, like I would, it would be really cool if Kawhi went to the Lakers. But Anthony Davis going to the Lakers, dude. I was, Him like, and LeBron is terrifying. Terrifying. And, and he that's fills two, and he fills a hole that's there. Two MVP level players. Mm-hmm. And he, and he fills a hole there yeah. that they absolutely they need. need. They yeah. they need a really good five. Yeah. And fucking. It's, but it's oh. weird because he like doesn't like playing the five, but when he plays the five, he's so good. Mm-hmm. He's so good when he plays mm-hmm. the five. Yeah. Oh, Boogie might go there. Yeah, that's another one, Boogie. I don't know. KD might go there. That's a rumor. That would be weird. It'd be super weird. I would rather him go to the Knicks. Than Let KD play the five, dog. He's do seven it. feet you tall. Could, you could do He's it. Seven feet tall. You could Why do not? It. He can rim protect. Um. Make it happen, Captain. 
Who knows? Maybe I don't know. Do. I think like I think in in terms of like most interesting, I think KD and Kyrie teaming up on the Knicks would be really interesting. But I don't want to see the Knicks be good because I'm a Heat. You're weird. No, I'm You're I'm kidding. Weird. I got into basketball like late enough in my life that I don't have these like 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 I hate the Patriots and the Jets. Uh huh. But I respect the Patriots. Right. I don't respect the Jets. <laughs> don't, like who who don't you like the most like, in the who, NBA? Like, like who is your least favorite? Probably the Rockets, specifically because of the play style. Same here. Because my They're thing with my thing with NBA is I just love watching basketball. So like the, the you know. When the, they're the doing, when they're doing and pick thing, and rolls and yeah, when they're doing that thing, it's not fun. So they're probably my least favorite to watch. Mm-hmm. I don't have the grudges of like you know I don't hate the Celtics and I don't hate the Sixers and I don't hate the Knicks on all this you know nonsense. They also like surprisingly like, are, is there any like personalities that you really like vibe with on the Rockets? Well, that's the weird thing. I think James Harden's cool. He's like a cool dude. I've, he dresses funny. He's got the beard. He makes jokes. I've never, but he doesn't have like a. So like, like like, as far as like when they talk and stuff, like I I'm not like when Joel talks, yeah, I, like I'm like oh shit, what what is this he's motherfucker gonna say? Yeah, like yeah. I'm I get really excited when yeah. Joel talks. Like Harden's not really like that. No. Like I like seeing him like like, like on the 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 bench like during warm ups and shit like dancing. And yeah. He's like, yeah. 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 Uh, that, that that's fun to me. Um and like him and Chris Paul's relationship is kind of interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Because they kind of like, uh, they talk shit to each other yeah. and stuff. But yeah, you're right. I can't really think of like a, a really. I mean, I don't know them as well. I'm sure, like, if you asked a Rockets fan, they could tell you that, like, you know, the, the fucking uh, some, PJ Tucker. That PJ like, Tucker. Well, he's got the shoe thing going. PJ Tucker. Oh, that's got true. The that's shoe pretty cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. That's pretty cool. And he can go like nuts that. this year. They can wear whatever they want for mm-hmm. shoes. I think that's enough basketball. I think it's enough basketball. I want to just do a football shout out real quick. What? Because my Dolphins are three and zero, and we're playing the Patriots. As of this Congrats, recording, dude. we're playing the Patriots tomorrow, and Congrats. I'm scared because the Patriots own dude. us in Gillette. Bup since Tom Brady became their quarterback. But if we beat them, I'm going to go absolutely insane. And we're going to have a three and a half game lead in the division. But uh, and so the many Lions people, also just beat them. Dude. Yeah, the Lions beat them. Your, your adopted Lions. Mm-hmm. You gave up on the Bucks mm-hmm. before Fitzmagic happened. I wouldn't two say. Two years before Fitzmagic happened. I wouldn't say that I gave up on the Bucks. I was never a real You're not Bucks into football fan. enough to really be into anyone. So you picked the Lions mm-hmm. to try to start anew mm-hmm. because you like their colors. And but I like, did it for important reasons. You like their colors. I did and it for you like their logo. Reasons. Exactly. And that's it. And the mascot. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the, it. the fact that they're the lions, lions are cool. Is cool. Lions are cool. Lion is a cool thing, and you like their colors. Yeah, that's, that's what's it. important. That's thing. what's important. That's what really matters. He chooses his football team the same way a child does, and that's important. Unashamed. Unashamed. You I, reg- I unashamed. regret nothing. But shout out. Also shout out our Florida Gators. Just beat Mississippi State. We just watched. That's, that. Yeah, that's pretty dope. That's pretty dope. Felipe. Stuff. Do I, b- I believe in Felipe Franks. I he's think a he'll sophomore this year. Yeah, he's a sophomore. I think he'll get there. I don't think he's there yet, but I think he'll get there. Mm. He got a lot of talent. He'll get there. Um, but the other big sporting thing to discuss happens a week from tonight as we are recording. Conor McGregor versus Calabeep. <laughs> Is that your Joey Diaz impression? Dog. 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 <laughs> Khabib Nurgam. Nerm- Dang it! I got nervous. You, and oh, it up. you got, I got nervous. You got, you got nervous. Nerm- nervous. Nermagamadov, <laughs> Khabib Nermagamadov, and Conor McGregor are fighting. Nerm- Nermagamadov, yeah. Nermagamadov, yeah. or Kalabib. Kalabib, as Joey Diaz calls him. Um, yeah, it's like the the it's debatably the biggest fight in UFC history. Mm-hmm. Debatably, it's where are they fighting? They're fighting. They're fighting in LA or Las Vegas. Las right? Vegas, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's not somewhere hype. Like it's not in Russia or in New York or something. Which I kind of, I was kind of excited Dude, for if it was in because Russia, it'd be so crazy because of Rocky IV. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it's be, Rocky but like IV. Connor's like not even American; he's <laughs> Irish. But you're just like, yeah, get the Russian dude. Uh, but I'm also like, I'm a huge Khabib fan. Well, I think I'm a huge. I think it, I think we both like and admire both of them a lot. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, we obviously you know. Conor McGregor is like this phenomenon and it's not it, and the thing that's weird about it is like not it's not because he's undefeated 
And it's not, you know, he's been, you know, he was the champ champ or whatever. He's not untouchable. He's not untouchable. What's and it crazy. makes him more interesting. Yeah. It, it, it makes you, all of his fights. You think you're about like, this fight, is he, is he going to back up what he says? You think about this fight and you're like, Khabib might just ragdoll him. Because if he was like a, like a, like an Anderson Silva type, like mm-hmm. we're like, you know, at the height or of his George prime or George St. Pierre, like that these people who like at the, the, the height of their careers yeah. literally looked untouchable, untouchable and you're like, they literally, they, they can't lose right now. Um, yep. like if he was, if he were uh, one of those type, it would be less compelling. He's more interesting because of it. But yeah, but you're like, if he fights a really good fucking wrestler, he might He's, just get that's been a weakness. Up. You know, like the Chad Mendez fight, he had a hard time with, and he got kind of uh-huh. gassed, and then he he found and the then he caught him. Yeah, he, he found caught the, him. but he caught him. And and the thing is, with this, you know, with Connor's left hand, he can end anyone on the planet, especially in an instant. And and it's not like. Khabib hasn't been caught before. Dude, well, the, the crazy thing is, of all people, Al Iaquinta showed weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Raging Al, shout yeah. out to yeah. the real estate agent. Who, who was he supposed to fight? That was, that was the uh, he was supposed this to fight t- Tony, Tony Ferguson, Ferguson for the twelfth time. time. Yeah. yeah, and Al stepped up on what like two weeks' notice or something, mm-hmm. and he showed cracks. Like he got beat, and he got beat handily. Yeah, but he showed vulnerability, which I don't think Khabib had ever shown. Yeah. He literally had walked into the ring with everyone he ever fought, mm-hmm. threw him to the ground, and beat the crap out of them mm-hmm. until they submitted, yeah. until they gave in, yeah. until their will was drawn from them. God, I fucking love He's a Khabib, terrifying though. human. I fucking love Khabib when he does that shit. He's a bear of a the man. Fa- like, like the, and he has, like, they both, uh, so, like, Connor and uh, Khabib ha- both have these just utter confidence in themselves. Like, yeah. When yeah. Khabib was Dude. fighting Michael Johnson... Right. And he was just beating the fuck out of yeah. him. And he was like looking into Michael Johnson's eyes and he was like, he was like, you must quit. You must quit. You, you must quit. He was like, it's Don't so make badass, me do this. Dude. I deserve champion. It's so cool. I deserve champion. Oh you God. know this. Just quit. Just tap. I don't want to do this. Like, I was, I was like, oh my God. I don't dude. know if you stopped doing Russian or not, oh. but that got weird. Oh, oh my god! Uh, yeah, it kind of went to a weird French. Place. Yeah, you went French. Um, <laughs> you went. You went French there. That did not want to do. Khabib's gonna hear that and come find you. He's gonna be offended. Uh, uh, Khabib, I'm so sorry. <laughs> don't hurt me, Khabib. <laughs> don't hurt me. But yeah, uh, like, it's it's so weird. It's it feels like the odds of him ragdolling Connor are equal to the odds of Connor catching him. Yes. Because Connor's done it so many times. Yeah. And yeah, and th- that's another like yeah, it just makes it so more compelling. Like, that... and he just literally he he goes he goes full Mystic Mac and he mm-hmm. calls his shot and he mm-hmm. does and he backs it up. Yeah, and he's done it several times. The uncertainty of the fight it's makes it so fucking. It's compelling. so interesting. I don't even know who. I literally couldn't tell you another fight on the card. I haven't lo- I haven't looked at it. I haven't it. looked at it. Yeah, I haven't looked at it, and I'm you know I'm hype mm-hmm. like beyond belief. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. It feels like this has been in the making for like three years. And I'm a little bummed that Khabib Tony didn't happen first. Yeah, I wish that would have happened first, and then that would have led to the you know who one of them gets to fight Connor. And I don't know who would win that fight either. That's another amazing, interesting fight. I I feel like just like I don't know if Tony them, Connor who would win. It's I f- those three guys. Well, I would I would say like uh, between the three of them, it seems like there would almost be like a rock paper scissors thing. In terms of style wins fights. Yeah, yeah exactly. So like I, maybe I feel... Khabib can ragdoll Connor. Connor can. Uh, he can timing and precision mm-hmm. again use timing and precision right. against uh, Tony timing beats power and precision beats speed mm-hmm. that amazing quote he said after was that the Aldo fight I yeah. think Ooh, I love that quote that's so cool Yeah. and then you think that maybe Tony can funk his way past uh, Khabib maybe uh, I, don't, I don't know man it, it, it's so up in the air well, like, it, the it, fact it, that yeah. look we haven't seen all, like any of the three yeah. like fight, fight each, each other, other yet yeah. it's fascinating yeah. mm-hmm Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I know I want to see. I see. I want to see it when it does. There's another interesting UFC storyline from this week: the 165 pound division. Oh fuck! That Nate that's Diaz, right. Nate Diaz, Nate Diaz, and Dustin Poirier are trying to Diamond create Dustin. from nothing, and I'm so into it. I am. So one of the things that makes me love the NBA is the amount of power the players have, how yeah. influential the players are yeah. over the league, mm-hmm. the amount of power they're trying to just muster up out of nothing mm-hmm. Dustin Poirier literally just tweeted I'm fighting Nate Diaz for the 165 pound belt at Madison Square Garden and right. Nate Diaz said I'm super excited to announce that I am fighting Dustin Poirier <laughs> at Madison Square Garden it's insane for the 165 it's pound crazy. belt it's crazy and the, the thing that makes it more nuts is they saw their shot and they took it they said there is a Madison Square Garden card in New York City 
in November or December. I think November. In two months, the next UFC event after the Conor Khabib fight doesn't have a main event. And the tickets were going on sale the next day. And they said, shoot your shot. Carpe diem. <laughs> we're fighting each other. It's shoot happening. And Dana was like, shot. huh? Dana White was like, that's silly. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's not silly. It's awesome. Because you know what does need to exist? 165-pound division. division. And 175-pound division. They need to stop with this weird gap. There should be divisions every 10 pounds. Do you feel like they should dissolve the 170? Yeah. Like, like no, I, get maybe not dissolve, but I would say give Tyron Woodley the 75 belt. He's the 75-pound champion. Or make his next fight for the 75 belt. You know what I'm saying? So you think that there should be a uh, welterweight and then something like I think it's called a super fighter. I think they were calling it. That's what Dustin. What? That's what Dustin and Nate were calling what? it. The super fighter division. They, they were calling 165. Yeah. The super fighter. Super division? fighter division. Which that's is a lame. Ass. You don't like that? Super oh, I like fighter? it. So like, I know boxing has a ton. So is this Dragon Ball Z? Yes. <laughs> Why not be Dragon Ball Z? Super Please. fighter. The Saiyan division. Let's do it. There's, uh, uh, there like boxing has so, so boxing many has so, more. Like I know cruiserweight's a thing, but I don't know where it falls. Yeah. And then they're like, this is super just, heavyweight. Just rob it, it, one just, of the billion fucking. Yeah, just steal one. Just yeah. throw it in there. I mean, yeah. I don't know about super You have something called or? welterweight. I don't know what that means. You have, you know, bantamweight. What is bantamweight? They just, they just make things up. I don't, I don't know dude i think it i don't i don't know it's the least of our worries is naming the 165 pound division but i'm down with super fighter division i'm into it the champion of <laughs> the, the super the fighter super, imagine bruce yelling that undisputed <laughs> super fighter say that, division though. he doesn't even do that he says the number the the oh, i'm pretty sure he says the number i don't think he says i don't think he yells like welterweight champion or maybe he does welterweight champion of the world well, oh, yeah, he does. He does. He does. He does. Super fighter. Dude, we've seen Bruce Buffer in person do his thing live. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. He's so cool. The, the one thing that, that you that get to see, so cool. the one thing that you get to see live, um, or the, the, that the cameras don't show yeah. as much of because he's like sort of off frame because they're always showing yeah. the fighters, is it's how aggressive he is with his body. He's like, jumping up and down. Yeah, dude. Oh, it, like. I wasn't surprised he tore his ACL. Because he's always fucking doing. And then this dude, not only did this old dude tore his ACL, but then he worked on it. Yeah. And he stayed heavy. Yeah. He still went in. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate that guy. Yeah. The other thing you don't get to see is like, like we saw like Junior Dos Santos like walk by. Mm -hmm. You know, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's Junior. Look how scary he is. But like, he also looks super nice mm. at the same time. But yeah. Um, UFC. Please make that happen. I think they're talking about doing John Jones Gustafson. I think. Which, oh yeah, so yeah, that's that I card. mean that's another thing. Jones is back, baby. He John back. Jones is back. John Jones is back. Uh, and like, like a girl or boy in an abusive relationship, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've like, changed this time. He's changed. <laughs> he's changed. I promise. But it's like weird because like. I hope he has. Well, I mean, it's it's like a weird thing because like. It was a tainted substance, and they, like, proved it was. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, he didn't cheat, I guess. Yeah, because he didn't do it intentionally. Yeah. The, but they him and, him and DC got a little bit of beef going this week. They did? They did. They had a little bit of beef. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, pull up the Instagram post and read them right now. I don't have a, I don't have a young Jamie to do that for me. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> shout out young Jamie. <laughs> um, but uh, I think basically, like, John was allowed back in, and then DC was like, oh, the cheater's back, you know, blah, blah, blah. He took his shot. Mm -hmm. Or or DC had – here's what happened. DC put a picture on his Instagram of his phone and had a missed call from USADA. And he was like, leave me alone, USADA. And John put this long Instagram post out. John was like, you can't – he was like, you can't handle answering the phone, Daniel, because you know if you answer the phone, then it's all real. Then you have to admit that you were wrong about me and that they're right. And then I didn't cheat. And then you have to admit that that shin that hit you in the face was real. And that I beat you. And that you know that your belt isn't real. Like all this stuff. He was like, he like went in on DC. And then DC was like, you're a cheater. And he called him a snitch. Because there's like that weird line in the USADA thing that said like John was cooperative with something. So people like think he might have snitched on people to get a, a shorter sentence. Really? Yeah, that's like a thing that might mm. be a thing. I don't know if it's real that's or not. That's interesting. Who knows? Um... Obviously, like, he's denying it and his agent are denying it. Mm. Who knows if it's real or not. Uh, but, you know, the beef is back. But Daniel Cormier is like, I've moved past it. I've moved past John Jones. Mm -hmm. I have my fight with Brock Lesnar coming up. Right. And it's like, dude, 
you'll never escape it. Never. You're talking about Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier will never escape John Jones. Which is so fucking sad. It's if sad. John Jones did not exist, if he did not live Daniel in Cormier there, would be undefeated. The pound for pound. Best fighter in the world. Best fighter in the world. It's weird to think about because it doesn't seem like it when you think of the Because way of John Jones. Yeah. Because of John Jones. If yeah. And the, the, the fact that uh, Daniel Cormier... I feel like a lot of people have like sort of like as they've gotten to know Daniel Cormier, they've sort of like because he's been an announcer. I think the narrative's and, changed on him for sure. People yeah. used to hate him. Yeah, hate him, and it's because everyone loved John Jones. Yeah, yeah, and I feel because like John's, it's kind of turned John a little bit. Managed to like hide that side of him that was like you know the villain side, doing coke say, before fights. I say fucking lean into that. Oh, shit, I dude. oh I, I say it. go you know heel turn baby. Yeah, be a villain. Yeah, I love it. It's it's fun. Mm-hmm. Conor McGregor is a villain. Mm-hmm. Conor McGregor, the fucking, like, the Diaz brothers, oh, you know, baby. like, talk shit, yeah. dude. Like, yeah. you don't have to be... Yeah, for sure. Um, um, Christ loves me all the time, you know? Yeah. But, like, <clears throat> at the same time, I hope that he is is telling the truth and has gotten, you know, his his life together and is doing well. Because I love John Jones. I, cause I want to see him fight. Oh, yeah. That dude is fucking it's, born to be amazing. in the octagon. It's amazing. And he, he belongs in there. Literally, when, when he kicked Daniel Cormier in the face in their last fight... Oh, oh my goodness. So, but, but that's the thing now. Daniel Cormier is supposed to fight Brock Lesnar for the heavyweight belt. Mm-hmm. That's kind of weird in and of, in and of itself, but whatever. Jones Gustafson is one of the best fights of all time. Yeah. Incredible. So I'm super into a rematch. That would be but, cool. But like, cool. it feels like throwing John to the wolves again. It's like, get back in there and throw down, son. But it's like, he might be the best fighter ever. So but, like, and do we, it. But we also don't know, like, if he has only like so many fights before he fucking does something yeah. stupid again. You yeah, know, you never know. Yeah. Like, like do we give him a warm up fight just in case, you well, know, he fucking, didn't they try to give him does something stupid warm up fight? He, I know he fought, he, he fought no, over St. Prue, he, but wasn't OVP. that supposed to be a DC fight and DC got hurt? Yes. So he had a warm up fight when he wasn't supposed to have one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you might be right. Just throw him in there. He want if he wants to be in there, throw him in there. Yeah. We but, should probably wrap the shit up uh, pretty soon though, dude. Cause uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're coming on two hours now. Yeah, and that seems like a solid time. Mm-hmm. Um, so you want your shoutouts? No, it's two shoutouts. So, ooh, um, one thing we want to do on these on these long form episodes is like just shout out something at the end that we like. So we're each gonna give our own shout out. I'm gonna go first. If you want to go first, feel free, Doug. So my shout out for the first ever episode of the Chris and Kyle Show is uh, hot take. My contender for album of the year. My favorite musical project of the year so far. In a year loaded, a loaded year, year of hip-hop. Really? In a year where po- potentially my favorite artist, J. Cole, released an album. Mm. And uh, another one of my favorite artists, Childish Gambino, has been releasing music. And I still think might release an album before the year's over. My favorite album of the year is Care For Me by Saba. Which I know you just listened to recently for the first time. I well, that was actually wasn't for the first oh, time. It, the first it was time, no, okay. it was like the second time that I've listened to it all the way through. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was a huge uh, Saba fan, like because I I've I never saw even him listened out. to Bucket List. Yeah, like he, I, it came out of nowhere for me. Yeah, like I um I saw that he had an album on Spotify, and I knew uh, of him through Chance the Rapper. Yeah, because of Angels, right? That's mm-hmm. the only thing I knew about him. Mm-hmm. I thought he was just like some dude who sang hooks. No. Nah. Um, no. He had, no, he is far beyond just some his dude music who sings is fucking hooks. incredible. He's this album specifically is it's so deep and it's so emotional, and it's just like it's it's driven from his cousin dying, his cousin Walter. Mm-hmm. He passed away, and like you know, a lot of the album is about telling that story hmm. and telling his own story, and you know, that's my favorite kind of music, is uh, you know, music that tells us the, your story, the the art hmm. the artist's story. And I just, I was so like blown back the first time I heard Care For Me. And there's just, some of the melodies on there are so beautiful. And, you know, his, his rapping obviously is great. There's a chance, the, I, the, I was exposed to the album because I saw, uh, I think maybe on Spotify, Discover or something, this, the song with Chance the Rapper, uh, Log Out. Was the, I heard that song. I was like, wow, I really like that song. I'm going to mm-hmm. go listen to this album. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that Saba, you know, rapped and stuff because I yeah. only knew him from Angels. Yeah. So I, when I listened to that album, I was like, whew, wow. Yeah. You, that, that, you need to listen to Bucket List. Yeah, I've got to listen to Bucket List. There's a song uh, on there called California that I think you'd, you'd really like. Yeah. 
Um, that, was, that was my favorite song on that album. Okay. Um, I but, definitely it, do. It, but it is a really it's good like, album. It's like, it's so weird with music. There's just, there's so much of it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, most of the time I'm listening L- to music. Any day of the fucking week. It's, you, yeah. you, 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 oh my God, this is yeah. my fucking new like, favorite music. Right most now. of the time I'm listening to music, it's like I'm driving to work. I'm not going to listen to an album when I'm driving mm-hmm. to work. Like, you, you need to go out of your way to, to take in a project and really appreciate it, I think. Mm. But take the time to do that for Care For Me by Sabo. That is my shout out for the week. What I, you got? I already mentioned this before, but for sure look up Inside the Score, uh, mm, the yeah. YouTube channel. Fucking really dope stuff. Uh, they don't just have, it's not just Harry Potter themed or anything like that. He fucking really knows music. Yeah. And uh, there's stuff on there for you to further appreciate classical music as well. Um, Interesting. So, like he, he goes into um, classical music and how you need to be more of an active listener. Yeah. Like there's like the reason why you have to pop music for musical themes and mm-hmm. there's not like a driving beat that keeps you in the song. The, yeah, yeah, like that. yeah, exactly. There's no catchy lyric. There's no catchy chorus. The, the reason that that pop there's music no earworms. The, the, yeah, the, well, there the, are, but they're different. The reason that uh, that pop music and rap music is constructed the way that it is is to cater to that fleeting yeah. uh, attention span. Yeah, um, and if you. It, it's just really easy to be bored by classical music. Yeah. Um, if you, if and you, just, if you can't, if you don't hear what's happening, mm-hmm. um, but and there's no lyrics. So it's like another, it's just another layer of mm-hmm. making it more difficult. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I would for sure recommend inside the score YouTube channel. That's your shout out. That's my shout out. Dude. Word. Take care or care for me. Sorry, not Drake's take care. <laughs> take care. care for me by Saba and inside the score on YouTube. So I'm a, I'm a peek this here because we are going to let you know where to find us. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can also listen. And if you're listening, you can watch oh. on YouTube. YouTube is just the Chris and Kyle show. Yeah, just the Chris and Kyle show. Uh, and, and you're probably going to have a hard time finding it on YouTube. Yeah. We're still trying to work We're a lot of this new. shit out. We're very new. Um, but yeah, we on our YouTube channel, we will have uh, long-form episodes as well as highlight videos and stuff like yep. that. We're going to take that. We're going to put that on our Instagram as well, our highlight mm-hmm. videos. Mm-hmm. We're also going to be doing shorts and shit like that. Oh, and uh, So if you of... want to watch really poorly done shorts, <laughs> feel <laughs> really free amateur stuff. to subscribe to yeah. us on YouTube. Uh, but speaking of things to look forward to, mm-hmm. we will. this comes out on Monday. You can expect these you know, long form, normal podcast episodes mm-hmm. every Monday, they might end up being sort of like a recap of the week of, of what happened in the world is, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about what's happening. Right. Um, but look forward to this Thursday and other Thursdays, maybe not every week, but you know, pretty regularly, we're going to do spoiler episodes for stuff. And our first one is going to be on Thursday for American Vandal. Ooh-hoo-hoo. We just binged season one and two of American Vandal. We'd already seen season one, but when season two came out, we rewatched season one, and led into season two, and we did a spoiler episode where we talked about guys watch American Vandal two. American Vandal. If you haven't uh, seen American Vandal one yet, watch American Vandal one, and then watch two. and then watch American Vandal two. two. Yeah, it's awesome. Spo- spoiler alert for the spoiler episode: We both like American Vandal. <laughs> um, but here are more in depth thoughts on you know things like performances and story and execution and all that kind of stuff. Uh, what is it? it's like thirty minutes? It's a shorter. It's shorter than than a normal episode. Mm-hmm. They're like half an hour probably. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, check that out. Look for that on Thursday. Um, going back to where you can find us, YouTube, The Chris and Kyle Show. The podcast, as we know right now, is available on Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. You have horrible handwriting. Breaker, mm-hmm. Pocket and Casts, and Radio Public. Radio Public. And we are waiting go. to find out if we are good enough for Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Uh, uh, Apple, I, <laughs> Apple's the, the pretty girl. Apple's the, the holdout. That everybody's trying to dance with. Yeah. Uh, and so, I, so are we. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the big one. But, yeah. Uh, but maybe, you know, we find out in the next couple of days probably whether or not that catches on and you yeah. might be able to find us there too. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find me personally, Kyle, uh, at I'm on Twitter. I tweet more than anything else. I don't really do much on Instagram, but I'm on there. Um, yeah, basically those. Uh, I'm Davinwell25. Maybe it'll be there. <laughs> or I'm just making a weird hand motion for no reason. We'll see. Uh, yeah, Davinwell25 on Twitter and on Instagram. I recently went in and purged out and deleted my old Twitter that I rebroke into and figured out my old password for Oh, you did? Yeah, so I could... Cause I feel I like was, I might have one I of those was lingering Twitter accounts. because my old one had my 25. Uh, yeah. I went back in and retook it. Okay. I was like, that's me. Oh, nice. That's me. That's the nice. real me. 
Oh yeah, you can dig back and look at my tweets. I tweet about uh, sports and movies <laughs> and music. You know the stuff we talk about on the podcast. But if you you might catch me when I'm really bored on a Thursday night live tweeting the Rams, the Rams game, game, like I did the other. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Or I I won't tweet for several weeks at a time. Mm-hmm. We'll see. It's pretty inconsistent, but I very rarely Instagram. I'll try to Instagram more as we try to get this going. Try to have a better, you know, social media presence. I guess. Mm-hmm. Where can they find? You good, sir. Uh, you can find me uh, on my Instagram, uh, Chris Michael Stott, and that's get ready, Stott. Get, get ready for the hashtags. S T O T T Stott, not Scott. Stott. S T O T T. Scott Stott. Uh, yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Chris Michael Stott, as well as my website. Uh, so this is like also an official announcement for my yeah. website as well. I haven't talked about this, so I've been working on my website for a while now. Um, I am a screenwriter for those of you that do not know me Mm -hmm. and I have uh, all of uh, my, what I think are actually good scripts. Yeah. Yeah, My actual like marketable scripts (laughs) are on, uh, are on my website and that's just Chris Michael Stott.com. Lunatic fringe on there. Uh, no, it is because not because it's a comic, but because it's a comic and the, the, the formatting of it is a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, I'm hoping that I can uh, find an artist by the time we move to LA. That'd be dope. Um, also, if uh, you know any but any artists, any artists any point, hit us up. <laughs> please hit us up. Yeah. Um, I'm open to anybody that is uh, that's really passionate that doesn't want any money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone in the same boat as us. <laughs> the one you aren't there yet. Someone that's <laughs> willing to do a whole bunch of work for nothing, uh, for absolutely for the, nothing, for, for love. Um, <laughs> But yeah, uh, please go to my website. Just check it out. Uh, all of my scripts are up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, ChrisMichaelStott.com. I'll try to get some stuff maybe we can throw on there too. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Maybe not. Mm-hmm. I you, I am technically speaking a professional actor. I've been paid once. <laughs> so I have that going for me. <laughs> you can't find that anywhere. It's a weird <laughs> UF thing. No one can find it. Maybe teachers in the Gainesville area will see it after I get famous. And maybe. they'll be like, wow. Maybe. Who can believe it? Um like we said, the YouTube channel, The Chris and Kyle Show. This is The Chris and Kyle Show. As well as our uh, collective Instagram oh, for... Yeah. We have an Instagram for the show now. Uh, and it's just The Chris and Kyle Everything Show. Everything is The Chris and Kyle Show. We will abbreviate to TCAX uh, for postings and stuff, but that's what it means. Mm-hmm. It's not short for tan khakis or something else weird. <laughs> T-C-A-K-S. Yeah. T-C-A-K-S. T-C-A-K-S. Um, I think other than that, we're good. So we I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, that we out. We out. Peace.